Everybody, look at this. Call our hearing number 383 to order. I'm going to sit down in just a second. But I'm speaking especially loud right now to ask each and every one of you, everybody, Andrew's got it, to reach into your pocket, pull out your cell phone, and silence it. Okay? But everybody, silence your cell phone, and that way you'll know who it is who's the offender when it goes off. <laughs> we'll all stop. Uh, so we're here for a hearing, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Moyer to introduce the hearing. Sure. This, uh, my name is Noah Marlier. For those of you who do not know me, I'm the solicitor for the Jankatown Zoning Hearing Board. I happen to grow up in Jankatown, so I'm seeing a few uh, familiar faces. We are here in the matter of uh, a zoning um, uh, appeal by David B. and Margaret Downs. And uh, the zoning uh, relief sought is that the, uh, the appeal of the zoning determination by Zoning Officer George Locke um, that they are in violation of the zoning code of the borough of Jankatown. Um, we have a few documents that I'd like to put into, into evidence. Uh, number one is a March 26, 2018 correspondence <clears throat> um, from the borough of Jankatown to the Downses. I'm going to mark that as ZHB1. And I believe, Mr. Uh, Block, that the correspondence was from you. Uh, April, April 17, 2018, I'm going to mark a ZHB2. This is correspondence from, uh, Mr. Lock, from Mr. Yanoff, attorney for the Downses, to Mr. Locke, cover correspondence along with the application uh, for zoning relief. ZHB2. And then a May 8th correspondence. This is the notice from Mr. Locke to the Downses of this hearing here tonight. CHB3. I'm going to mark as ZHB4 a May 8th, 2018 notice to all the affected neighbors. I think every single one of them is here tonight, it looks like. Um, that went from the borough to the affected neighbors. That's going to be ZHB4. I'm going to mark a ZHB 5, the posting certification uh, by Mr. Locke, zoning officer of the property. The property was posted with the notice for this evening. ZHB 5. Mr. Manjardi, am I going slow enough? ZHB 6 uh, is the uh, notice uh, as published um, and required by the Municipalities Planning Code. All of these notices are required by the NPC. <laughs> And this is the notice by publication. I'm going to mark that as ZHB 6. <coughs> Mr. Hitchens, Mr. Yanoff, anything to add to that? You no, thank you. Uh, yeah, just to clarify, so ZHB 1 is actually the notice of violation that we're here on, and ZHB 2 is both the correspondence as well as the application of appeal, correct? That's exactly right, Mr. Hitchens. Thank you for that clarification. That's correct. Thank you. But then with those two clarifications, now I have no more questions. <coughs> I'd like to have a uh, just a quick review of uh, the fact that we have a quorum here tonight. So, uh, Bella? Here. Donia? Here. Robert Hudson? Here. Ms. Run? Here. Mr. McCabe? Here. We have a quorum of five, and also with us this evening <coughs> is uh, our counselor, Mr. Noah Mollier. And uh, we are here. We're going to kick this off. This is an applicant. The applicant has appealed the decision of the code enforcement officer written an official notice of zoning code violations 181-10.G.1, 181-10G.2, 181-10G.5, 181-10G.7 for the landscaping and related business activities identified at 301 Runnemede Avenue, Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. Mr. Uh, Hitchens, Mr. Yanoff, do either of you want to do an opening statement tonight? Uh, you know, briefly, briefly, just so the board is aware, <coughs> essentially what they're going to be hearing tonight might be helpful. Sure. <coughs> um, good evening, board. Uh, my name is Patrick Hitchens. I'm the solicitor for the borough of Jenkintown. 
Um, you're here tonight on a notice of violation that was issued by Mr. Locke, who is also serves as the zoning officer for the municipality. Um, Mr. Locke had issued, as you will hear the testimony tonight, Mr. Locke issued a notice of violation with regard to the subject property, which is 301 Running Mead Avenue. Uh, it was with regard to, or for, in response to, various complaints he had received about a business being operated from that location. Uh, as you will also hear, the property is located in, I believe it's the B1 <coughs> residential district, which does not permit uh, for businesses, or I should clarify, you will hear it only permits certain types of business activities within the B1 district. Uh, you will hear testimony from Mr. Locke about how he came to his determination about issuing it, and, uh, and what had caused him to <coughs> send that citation notice. Um, you'll also hear from the neighbor complainant, Ms. Glass, about the various complaints she had made to the township with regard to these business activities. <coughs> and you'll also hear tonight from uh, the, the property owner of uh, Mrs. Glass's property, Mr. Riley. Uh, and he will also testify uh, about the impact that that business has had on his property that's located there. Um, essentially, after you've heard all the evidence, we would just ask that you, you know, take them all into consideration and render a decision with regards to the notice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Yeah. Very briefly, I, I think it's important for us to recognize that what's been marked as ZHB1 is the basis for this hearing, and this, that it requires that as of March 26, 2018, the current condition at 301 Running Meat Avenue is what's being noticed as a violation, and I think the date is very important. So any testimony that doesn't relate to what's going on on March 26, 2018 is entirely irrelevant. And things that go back, and I've been given a packet of information from Mr. Hitchens, and I've also uh, essentially know what's going on here. Um, the information that, much of the information that's been provided to you and will be provided to you have absolutely nothing to do with March 26, 2018, or even, even at or about its time, at about that time. The bottom line of the situation is there is no business being operated out of 301 right now. And I have a cast of thousands here this evening who are willing to attest to that fact. So, off we go. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Hitchens, I believe you're up. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call my first witness uh, as the <coughs> zoning officer, uh, Mr. Locke. Uh, Mr. Locke, if you could be sworn. <coughs> very handy, some sort of testimony about the game. Is the truth, the whole truth is nothing but the truth, so help you go out there. Uh, Mr. Solicitor, a uh, procedural question before we begin. Um, I have, as um, Mr. Yanov has identified, I have several documents here that I'm going to be marking as an exhibit uh, with Mr. Locke's testimony as well as the other witnesses. Um, for ease and speed, I've already provided all these copies to Mr. Yanov so he can follow along and mark them accordingly. Um, with your permission, I would just like to hand them up to the board as we go along so you can distribute them to the board members as we're, as we're discussing. That's fine. I have no problem. Okay. Sure. Great. Thank you, Susan. Subject to objections as we go along. <coughs> Agree. Agree. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Yanov, let me ask you this. Are you objecting to any of them? Well. It's premature for me to yep. object to them at this particular moment, but there will be objections as we go along. I have no doubt. And I fully anticipate I'll have responses to those objections as well. I have no doubt. <laughs> Why don't you hand them up, Mr. Richards? Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Locke, if you could, please state your name for the record. George Locke. And Mr. Locke, uh, what is your current position? Borough Manager, Zoning Officer, And how long have you held that position? Um, and Mr. Locke, before you held that position, uh, did you hold any other positions with any other municipalities? Well, I worked here for a third party engineer. And what did you do for that third party engineer? I was a building inspector and zoning officer. Uh, do you have any specialized training or certifications in zoning or building codes? Yes, I have uh, certifications from the ICC and the building codes. I have 17. Certifications in ICC. Um, I'm certified zoning officer. I, I will stipulate to Mr. Locke's qualifications. Okay, thank you. Um, now, 
We're here tonight for a property, or actually for a notice of violation that you issued on March 26, 2018, um, with regards to the property located at 301 Running Mean Avenue. Are you familiar with that property? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to mark as Borough 1. <coughs> the document, and if you could take a look at that while I hand it up to the solicitor. Now, B1 is a two-page document, is that correct? That is correct. And I will represent to you that that is a printout from the Montgomery County Board of Assessment Appeals with regards to the 301 Running Meat property, is that correct? That is correct. And who does the public record show as the owner of the property? David and Margaret A. Okay. And uh, what does it list it, the property's uh, current zoning as? <coughs> And I'm glad you're taking a moment because that's a trick question. It doesn't state, correct, what the current zoning is, does it? I don't see that it says B1 anywhere on here. Correct. It does have something called a land use description. Do you see that? Yes, residential single family. And, but that's not a code that's used by the municipality, is it? No, it's not. That's something that's used by the county, correct? That's correct. And do you know what the zoning is for this, this specific property? This property is in the B1. Um, now, in order to help guide your attention along, uh, have you ever received any complaints with regard to 301 Running Mean Avenue? Yes, I have. Okay. And um, first, do you recall receiving any complaints starting back in October of 2016 with regard to Running Mean Avenue? Objection, relevance. Once again, Mr. Marlier and members of the board, we have a notice of violation that calls out current conditions at Running Meat Avenue, and current conditions mean at or about March 26, 2018, not 2016. Respect, respectfully, um, one, I believe that under the NPC, the rules of evidence are slightly relaxed. Uh, two, the side has to give an opportunity to lay a foundation as to what prompted this zoning violation or this notice of violation to go out. So certainly with regard to a business operation, which frankly could stop or cease any day, hour one, and commence at hour three, it's only fair for the municipality to be able to show at least the, one, what was the basis of issuing the, the notice originally, and two, to show that there is a pattern in practice of a business having been operated at this location. Particularly when you're dealing with a business, as we have alleged, as a landscaping business that would presumably be seasonal to begin with, Every December, I'm not sure they're cutting any grass in, in December. Well, that, that's, not, that's not my problem. <coughs> the borough has a certain <coughs> degree of proof. And whether it's fair to the borough or not fair to the borough, it still means that they have to comply with what it is that they've alleged has occurred here. And Mr. Gannon, I'll tell you. I'm going to let it in uh, for the purpose that Mr. Hitchens has, has uh, discussed. Um, but I understand your objection, and I'm sure you'll make it again. And as we go along, we'll most likely read Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Locke, uh, turning your attention to October of 2016, do you recall receiving any complaints with regard to business being operated out of the, out of the 301 Running Meat property? Uh, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as B2. Uh, Mr. Locke, I've 
handed you a document that I marked as B2. Uh, if you could, uh, how many pages is B2? Four pages. And uh, would you agree with me that B2 contains four pages, including a cover page that states complaint, a letter, and then two photographs? That is correct. And who is that complaint from? Objection hearsay. It's a writing that speaks for itself. Well, then, then it speaks for itself. And it also relates to the issue of timing, which I've raised before. Understood. Mr. Marlier, just to make it easy, I think I should have a standing, if I may, have a standing objection to anything that relates to this timing issue, so that I don't have to burden the record and the board with respect to the same comments over and over again. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, um, I think, but I think we need to address those issues as they come up in some fashion. So I understand what you're saying, Mr. Mr. Yanov. Um, regarding hearsay, uh, I would imagine Ms. Glass is here. Mr. Hitchens, correct? I identified at my outset that Ms. Glass was going to be one of the witnesses testifying. Right. At this point, I'm using this in order to explain to the board what prompted Mr. Uh, Locke in order to issue his notice of violation. And Mr. Locke certainly has a right to rely on information that's provided to him uh, <coughs> in pieces as a basis for issuing his violation. So for now, we're going to uh, allow it for that purpose. Thank you. <coughs> So what I identified as B2, a document dated 10-25-2006, is that correct? 16. I'm sorry, 16. Thank you. Uh, and did you have a chance to review that document prior today? I've read it before today, yes. And what was your understanding from what you had read from that complaint? My understanding was this complainant was saying that there was the Objection. A you have the witness here, that's the best evidence. I'm asking... But he's asking, you're asking his interpretation of what the witness said. Correct. And he has a right to identify what his understanding Mr. was of the complaint. Mr. Hitchens, direct it to me. Thank you. You were saying. Mr. Locke has a right to identify uh, what his understanding was of the complaint in order to explain and justify his further actions. I'm not asking for him to identify what is stated in there. I'm not asking for him to repeat what was ever told to him. I'm merely asking what his understanding was. It's not here. So. Understood. And that's, it goes to what, how, why he <coughs> acted in the way he acted in, in issuing the citation. I'll allow that. In 2016. I understand, Mr. Yanoff, the date issue. Go ahead, Mr. Hitchens. So, Mr. Locke, you'd received this complaint from, from Mr. and Mrs. Glass, is that correct? That is correct. And you had an opportunity to review this document prior to today? That is correct. And you had an opportunity to review this document prior to issuing your notice of violation? That is correct. Was this document a part of your review of records prior or in determining to issue a violation? And let me say it more succinctly. Did you consider this document as a part of your decision to issue a notice of violation? You did not consider this document as a part of your decision to issue a notice of violation? Yes, good answer. It is. Move on, Mr. Hitchens. I'll respond. <clears throat> There's no question before you, sir. Was this the first or last complaint you received with regard to the 301 Running Me Avenue property? This was the first complaint. Did you receive subsequent complaints? Yes, I did. And were they from Mr. and Mrs. Glass? I'll have to look at them, but I know that they were from Mrs. Glass. Okay. I'm going to mark as B3, the document. Take a look at that. If you could just identify for me just so I know. Make sure I have the Sure. This is a document that is... <coughs> Just give me the date. You have the date the first one. This is a 14-page document that on the front page states complaint dated 9-20-17, name Christine and Joseph Glass. Do you have that, Mr. Yano? I do. <coughs> That's correct. Pages. I believe I stated 14, but I will rely on what's in the record. Looks like 14 to me. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Locke, did you have an opportunity to receive earlier this 9 20 
2017 complaint from the glasses. <clears throat> I did. And did you have a chance to review it? Yes, I did. And what was your understanding of the complaint that was being made by the glasses? Same objection as before. Understood. Go ahead, Mr. Richards. My understanding was that the complainant thought there was a business being run out of here. Now, was that the last complaint that you received with regard to the 301 running the property? No, it was not. We're going to mark it before. <coughs> this is a two-page document date, uh, dated 9-25-2017, titled Complaint, Name Christine and Joseph Glass. <coughs> show this to the witness. If you could, please take a moment to look at it. Uh, Mr. Locke, uh, did you have a chance to review what I had marked as B4 prior to today? Yes, sir. And what is that? It's a complaint that was filed with the borough. By? With regard to what property? 301. And what was your understanding of what that complaint's purpose was? Objection. Uh, similar objection. I'm allowed to the question. Go ahead, Mr. Fletcher. Was that a business with 301? Uh, do you recall whether that was the last complaint you received with regard to 301? It was not the last complaint. I'm going to mark as B5. This is a three-page, I'm sorry, four-page document <coughs> titled Complaint, dated 9-29-2017 by Joseph and Christine Glass. Mr. Yanoff, do you have a copy of this? I do. Show this to the witness. Could, I'd, like, I'd like to interpose a different objection at this particular point. Before <coughs> the witness testifies about the contents of this particular exhibit, and before the board gets an opportunity to view it, there are comments in that, that are next to what purport to be pictures of certain things occur, which go right to the issue of, uh, about what this board is actually going to be deciding. And we do have the witness here, and for, for this witness to testify about somebody else's impressions about what a picture shows is hearsay. And I know that the zoning hearing board and zoning rules don't necessarily abide by the rules of evidence. But this goes way beyond the pale. Uh, objection. I'm, I'm going to respond to that first. The borough gets the opportunity to present its case as it chooses. It has chosen to start with Mr. Locke. I've already <coughs> identified repeatedly for this board and for Mr. Yanoff that Ms. Glass will be called as a witness. I will clearly be going through all of these same complaints with Ms. Glass so she can explain what it is that she's complaining. Again, no, these, no, we don't Mr. Mr. Yanoff. Yanoff. Well, no, okay, don't yell. Two things, two things for everybody. Number one, I heard someone call out when there was an <coughs> objection, call out and answer that objection. I'm the one who rules on objections. So for everybody in the audience, listen, listen intently, but please don't shout out. Now, that goes especially for attorneys. So, Mr. Yanoff and Mr. Hitchens, if you have objections, object, object, talk to me. I will not allow you to talk to each other. Understood. Okay? Talk to me. Mr. Yanoff, you look at me. I'll look at you, Mr. Hitchens, ask for your response, but I'm not going to allow any more discussion between the two of you. Understood. I don't even know where we were. Uh, you were in the middle of my objection and Mr. Hitch's response. The difference between this exhibit and the previous exhibits is that this contains interpretive information about pictures, and this witness should not be permitted to testify about somebody else's interpretation of the picture. So here's what I'm going to do, Mr. Yano. I understand what you're saying, um, and as you know, the whole, the, the, as you know, um, the rules of evidence are more relaxed on uh, the zoning hearing board. But I'll also say this. Mr. Uh, Locke can testify as to how this document um, furthered his actions. He cannot testify to his interpretations of what's, uh, you know, uh, 
is being written or any notes that were written down. Or Ms. Glass's interpretations? Yes, uh, absolutely. Not just his, but Ms. Glass's. I think that would be speculation as well. Thank so you. that he cannot do, but he can say what this document did to further his actions. Mr. Hitchens, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I believe I had marked previously what was B5. Uh, Mr. Locke, had you seen that document prior to today? Yes, I have. Uh, and again, what is that document? It's a complaint filed by Joseph and Christine Glass. And what was the complaint with regard to? The complaint was that they were running a business out of 301 Romney Avenue. And was that the last complaint you received with regard to 301 Romney Avenue? No, it was not. Okay, I'm going to mark it B6. <coughs> This is a This is a 10-page document that states complaint at the top dated 10317 from a Joseph and Christine Glass. <coughs> Mr. Ganoff, do you have a copy of this? I do. Mr. Locke, uh, did you have a chance to see B6 prior to today? Yes, I have. And incidentally, Mr. Locke, I didn't ask you, but the documents I had previously marked, B2 through B6, do they contain any stamps that the borough would have placed on it? Yeah, date stamps are on each other. What are the purpose of the date stamps? Um, we stamp complaints or anything that comes across the document when we receive it. So would it be fair to say that the red stamps that you see on the documents identify when the borough had received those complaints? Yes, I would say so. Okay. So going back then to B6, um, you stated that you'd already received, you'd reviewed that previously, is that correct? Yes, and again, what was your understanding that the complaint was about? The complaint was about the landscape business being run out of 301 running. And was that the last complaint you'd received with regard to 301 running? <coughs> I'm going to mark as B7. A five page document that's titled Complaint on the front. There is no date, and the name listed is Christine Glass. Do you have a copy of this, Mr. Yano? <coughs> I do. Uh, Mr. Locke, um, would you agree with me that there's no date on B7? There's no date from the complaint. Is there a state stamp, though, from the municipality? Yes, there is. And what is that date stamp? October 17, 2017. And again, what is this B7 document? As you understand. As I understand, it's a complaint by Christine Glass about business being run out of 301. And was that the last complaint you'd received with regard to 301 running me? I'm going to mark as B8. document that's titled Complaint at the Top, dated 10-2017 uh, by Christine Glass. Do you have a copy of this, Mr. Yano? I do. Mr. Locke, prior to today, have you seen that document before? Yes, I Does it contain a municipal stamp? Yes, it does. And when did the municipality receive a copy of that? On October 20, 2017. And again, what's your understanding of the nature of that complaint? My understanding is that Christine Glass was continuing about a business meeting to run out of 301 Romney Avenue. <coughs> Do you recall whether that's the last complaint you received with regard to 301 Running Mead Avenue? It was not. I'm going to mark another document as B9. This is a five page document. Titled on the front complaint, date 10-24-17, name 
pristine glass. Mr. Locke, have you seen that document prior to today? Yes, I have. First, uh, does that document contain a received stamp by the municipality? No, it does not have one. Do you recall whether or not the municipality actually received a copy of that document? Well, I read it, so I assume it received it. It's not stamped, so I can't. You can't say for sure. I can't say. Um, I mean, what was the nature of the complaint in the 10-24-2017 complaint? Objection. This is very different from the previous exhibits. This is a narrative letter. Understood. Mr. Hitchens, if you could, if you're going to bring this in to, uh, for the same purposes, the other documents, the other complaints, as to why Mr. Locke did what he did and what actions he took, maybe you could lay a foundation for that. Certainly. Mr. Locke, um, you said you've been working for the municipality for five years. Is that correct? <coughs> Have you issued other notice of violations before? Objection relevance. You, you asked me to lay a foundation, Correct. solicitor. So what I'm trying to do is lay a foundation that Mr. Locke, in the past, has received complaints from neighbors with regard to zoning or code enforcement matters. Based off of those complaints, whether they were oral or written, he has done an investigation and he's prompted action. This is no different than those other those other incidences. I'm merely trying to show he's merely following the procedures that he would have for any other matter. Why don't, why don't we, uh, if that's the case? Maybe we can ask Mr. Locke um, what actions he took based on this letter. Correct, but wouldn't it be helpful for the board to know what he understood the letter to be about? No, the letter. Uh, I, I, I think we're going to get into that significantly, I would imagine. So why don't we um, <coughs> jump right to what his actions were? Um, I'm going to sustain the objection um, on this one. Okay. I'm going to mark as B10 a series of three emails. <coughs> These are three emails dated October 25th, 2017 at 6.41 p.m. from a pristine glass to George Locke. A second email from pristine glass to George Locke also dated October 25th uh, at 6.41 p.m. Appears to be a duplicate. <clears throat> a third email dated November 6th, 2017 at 10.02 a.m. from George Locke to Shelby Smith, but within it, below, you'll see Mr. Yanoff, it states, an email that's been forwarded from Christine Glass to George Locke dated November 5th, 2017 <coughs> at 6.42 p.m. And then finally, the last page, because this is four pages, I stand corrected on the record, is another forwarded email dated November 5th, 2017 at 8.01 p.m. from a pristine glass to George Locke. November 5th? Oh, yes, I do see that. Do you have a copy, Mr. Gannon? I do, but I also have an objection. Yes, Mr. Gannon, you have an objection. Well, I'd, I'd like to know what, what purpose we're going to be using this for. This, this has the same type of information as is contained in the document that you sustained the objection for in B9. It's comments and interpretations made by a certain, allegedly made by a certain individual in an email to Mr. Locke. I sustain the objection on B9, just to be clear, uh, as to uh, not, your objection was if he was going to delve into, if he was going to use that document to read what's there and, and, and what was being complained of, not to go into what his actions were based on that. So for the same reason, I'll allow B10 that Mr. Locke can testify as to what actions he took and why. But not the contents of the, uh, of the emails themselves. 
Yeah. To the extent that they, that the information prompted him to do something, I'll allow it. <clears throat> Now, I've marked for you, Mr. Locke, a four-page document, and do you recognize these? And take a moment to look through all four. I don't want you to be rushed. Is it three or four? It's actually four pages. That's my fault. So there's a duplicate. There's a duplicate in there, which is why it's four pages. Emails from your email account? They're emails to you. And who are the emails from? And what are they about that you understand in the paper? Objection. That goes into the content. I'll allow him to go into the general content. That's what the testimony has been consistently for a number of documents now. Generally, what they were about and, and how Mr. Locke. So, again, what was your understanding of what these emails were about? Well, two of them were following up on the complaints and asking for status. And one was informing me of work they were doing on the house. Uh, assembling a scaffold on the side of the fixture of When you say their house, whose house do you mean? Uh, 303 Runnymede, Christine Black. So not the 301 Runnymede property. Mm -hmm. So it would be a different property. Yeah, that is true. Okay, but then there were also a question, I believe you understood that it was about the status of prior complaints that were made with regard to 301. That is correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Locke, I've identified approximately 10 documents with regard to complaints. Did you ever do any investigations based off of those complaints that you received? Yes, I did. I'm going to mark for you a document as B11. <clears throat> this is a three page document titled Memorandum at the Top <clears throat> to Borough Council from George Locke, dated October 11, 2017. You could, Mr. Locke, please take a moment to look at that. <clears throat> Do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. Was that document offered by you? Yes, it was. Mr. Yanov, do you have any objection to him testifying about the contents of B11? Um, I apologize. Why don't you ask the question? And, Fair enough. And Mr. Yanov may or may not object. Uh, if you could, please explain to the board <coughs> what is contained in B11. This is a. Uh, this documents what went on from the very first complaint. Let's start with what's the complaints about? About a business being run out of 301 Run Mobile. And when is it stating, according to your document, the first initial complaint was received by you? October 25th, 2016. After receiving that complaint, according to the memo and your recollection, what did you do? Uh, I did a drive by inspection. Uh, I spoke with the police. <coughs> to the complainant 
I follow up with the complaint and uh, inspection and, and review of the pictures <coughs> situation. And, and, the and you said you spoke to the downstairs. What did you talk to them about? I told them that there was a complaint that they were running a landscape business out of their property and that there was a complaint that there was a landscape, a commercial landscape trailer in their driveway. And what response do you recall, if any, did you receive? Uh, I was told that it was used for volunteer work, um, breathing the room, and shade tree commission, things like that. Okay. Um, and after you did the two drive-bys, did you see anything else? No, I did not. Okay. Um, and according to your memo, did you receive any further complaints after that 2016 date? Yes, I did. And are those the complaints that we had previously marked approximately B2 through <coughs> B10? And does your memo summarize those complaints? Yes, it does. Uh, now, based off of your investigation or review of those complaints, did you come to any conclusion as to the next steps that you were going to take? Yes, there, were, there was two paths. The first complaint that was a year ago, a year before the other complaints, and were different. When you say that year, what year do you mean? Uh, so the October 25th, 2016 complaint, where I did the drive-bys, I spoke to the residents of 301, and uh, I completed that investigation. And I found that there wasn't evidence that rose to the level of running a business out of it. So is that why when I asked you earlier, the very first B2 document I, I identified, whether that was a part of your decision making in this notice, is that why it wasn't a part of your, your decision making? That is correct. Okay. So after that, you we had identified several 2017 complaints, correct? Yes. And uh, after review of those complaints, what determination did you decide to, to take? What was your path? The, the path was that the, um, I had received I think eight complaints, uh, a lot of videos, pictures. I reviewed them, I sent them the legal, uh, and it, it looked as if it rose to the level of running a business. And in this memo, I speak to that. This memo was the borough council, that memo where the situation was. Uh, so, where in your memo do you speak to what the, the, the next step is? Objection, the document speaks for itself. He, he can. If you could, since the audience here can't read what you have, it might be helpful if you could just read into the record the last two paragraphs. Objection. This is a document that speaks for itself, and there are legal conclusions contained in here which are within the purview of this board, not this individual. Well, I think we're. we're I'm going to allow. Mr. Mr. Locke has made a zoning determination. That's why we're here. I believe that we're heading towards why he made the zoning determination, and, and uh, this helps us understand that. So, Mr. Locke, if you can read those last two paragraphs out loud for both the benefit of the board and for the benefit of those individuals who are here who don't have a copy of it. After thorough review of all the documents provided, the borough has concerns that these complaints, photographs, and videos depict, them, that depict the running of a landscape business. A compliance letter has been drafted as well as a request for a meeting with David and Margaret Town. The package containing the summary compliance letter and all supporting evidence has been submitted to the borough solicitor for legal review and guidance. And the final paragraph says, under these conditions, as a standard to be as a standard to determine if a business is being operated has been redefined due to recent legal cases and rulings, the borough must make their determination based on the new redefined standard. The borough feels as though this may violate sections 18110G1, 18110G2. 18110G4 of the Jenkintown Borough Code relating to no impact business, specifically the delivery and removal functions to or from the premises in excess of those normally associated with residential use. When you say in your letter a redefined standard, if you could please explain to the board what are you referring to as the redefined standard? Well, 
very recently we had another uh, a case where one neighbor was saying another neighbor was running a business. Uh, I wrote a citation based off of those complaints when it went to court. Uh, objection. What's the nature of your objection? It's relevance. What, what happened in court in another proceeding and not involving these individuals? And there could have been a thousand reasons why whatever he's going to tell us about it hurt. Not to mention the fact that it has nothing to do with current conditions and running it. I understand, but it has to do with the law. Mr. Hitchens, go ahead. My question was, what did he mean by redefined standard? I think he has a right to explain to this board what he means by redefined standard. Mr. Yanov certainly has a right to cross-examine Mr. Mr. Locke regarding that redefined standard. He certainly has the opportunity to present any witnesses or information. I'm really trying to, so the board understands when he said redefined standard, what did he mean by that and why that impacted his decision to issue the notice of violation. So let's, I'll sustain the objection to, the, to this extent. Why don't, I think, I don't think it's relevant what the standard was prior. I think Mr. Locke can speak to what the standard is at that time, what it was redefined as. I don't think he needs to go into you know, how he learned there was a redefined standard. I don't think that's relevant for this. Respectfully, how would he explain what the redefined standard was if he doesn't state the basis? Kind of like if a case came out that redefined the standard, you'd have to explain to the court and to the judge what the case was about and how it changed. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm just not sure how I'm supposed to ask him the question to explain the redefined standard without him explaining how that standard was redefined. Why don't you explain to me what the relevance is then of the standard as it was before this was issued? Understood. The notice of violation in this case was issued. Understood. I believe the witness will testify. Uh, I, he's now testifying. He's, suggesting no, no, he's, at, he's answering my question as to how it's relevant. But the problem is that it suggests the answer to the witness. The, the most important thing is that transfer. <coughs> Oh, they know it's coming from Actually, no. The most factual. important thing that occurs is what these people sitting up here listen to. Mr. Hitchens, I'm going to allow you to explain to me what is relevant about this so I can rule on this objection. I believe Mr. Locke is trying to be able to explain to the board that in a similar circumstance of a complaint with regard to a business operating out of a house within the B1 residential district, what factors were used in making his determination that there was a violation of that? Which factors were then sustained by the magisterial district judge as a violation of operating a business? I believe that's what Mr. Locke is trying to explain to the board is what had occurred in that situation so as to show that he's being uniform in the treatment and application of the same provision of the B1 residential district. I don't think, if Mr. Yanov brings up a lack of uniformity, you can, um, follow up with your witness um, regarding this, but right now I don't think it's relevant. There's no, uh, no reason to, 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 for this board to hear that Mr. Locke's being uniform or have any reason to believe he's not. I would put up your case, so I'm sustaining the objection, it's not relevant, and I would move forward with your next question. But if I understand correctly, if Mr. Yanov raises questions as to the uniformity or uniform application, then it does become a difficult. He would, of course, be opening the door for you to be able to rehabilitate your witness as to the fact that he does treat residents uniform. Yes. Understood. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Mr. Locke, in the in the memo, you identified that you were going to issue a letter. Is that correct? Yes, I said. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I said compliance letter. Correct. Okay. I'm going to mark as B12. This is a two-page document. If you could please take a look at it. It is a letter on borough letterhead dated November 21st, 2017 to a David and Margaret Downs. It's a one-page letter. On the second page, there is a certified mail receipt. Do you have a copy of that, Mr. Yano? <coughs> Mr. Locke, is this the letter that you drafted? Yes, it is. Uh, and who is the letter addressed to? Mr. and Mrs. 
And what is this letter about? This letter is about the complaints that have been received, the photographs, the videos. Um, <coughs> It's about a known impact business. So at the time you wrote this letter, had any notice of violation been issued? No. So why then did you want to send this letter to the Downsons? As a courtesy. As a courtesy to do what? To keep them informed and let them know the process that we're going through. Were you at all interested in trying to resolve the matter? Objection relevance. Overruled. Mr. Lockett, answer. Yes, of course. We want to resolve. Um, as a result of that letter being issued, did you issue any other letters? <coughs> as a result of what I'm sorry. After issuing that letter, oh, yes. did you issue any other letters? Yes. I'm going to mark as B13. <coughs> This is a two-page letter, again, on borough letterhead, dated December 7, 2017. Captioned, Official Notice of Zoning Code Violation, addressed to a David and Margaret Downs. Do you have a copy of this, Mr. Gallo? I do. First, uh, Mr. Locke, did you draft this letter? Yes, I did. What purpose was this letter to serve? This is a notice of violation. <clears throat> and what were the 301 Running Mead Avenue property owners being noticed uh, about? Objection. This document was um, dismissed by the Magisterial District Judge as an ineffective notice of violation. It was thrown out. Understood. What's your objection? It has no relevance to this determination. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is this letter is not being used for the purpose of showing that they received a specific notice under the MPC. Rather, this document, as all the other documents, is merely trying to provide a timeline for this board to understand the actions and steps that the municipality went through prior to issuing what ZHB had already identified as the actual notice of violation, which is ZHB 1. Mr. Yano, I'm going to uh, overrule your objection. I'm sure you will have more cross-examination on that. Um, so this December 7th letter you had issued, correct? And what was it notifying the, the Downses of the violation of? And did you identify what type of business activity it was? landscaping anywhere, does it? <coughs> anywhere in this letter does it show what the fines and penalties would be if they don't come to compliance? Yes, it does. Where does it show that? Does it at all tell the Downs as how long they have to file an appeal to the zoning hearing board?
pose an objection at this particular moment. What relevance is it whether it gives them notice of that or not? Let me finish. We're here on an appeal to the Senate Hearing Board for a notice of, of violation dated March 26, 2018. What this document contains or doesn't contain is, has no relevance to this board's determination as to whether or not there is a violation that is, that is uh, declared in the March 26, 2018 notice. Whether it contains specific findings or not, you know, when you go into why that this, this document was thrown out and the entire case was thrown out, I'll be happy to do it, but it makes no sense for this board to hear that because it's not before the board. Mr. Yadol, for allow me, I'm trying to get from Mr. Locker to show that this was in fact a defective notice. I and agree, it was a defective notice well, the board thrown out. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Yano. Sorry. I'm actually trying to prove Mr. Yanoff's point that it was, in fact, a defective notice. And therefore, that's what prompted the March 26, 2018 second notice to go out. Again, I'm merely trying to provide a timeline to the board to explain the actions that were taken by... But if Mr. Yanoff's willing to stipulate that that notice was defective, that would require the second notice, I have no problem with that stipulation. No, I'm, not, I'm not going to stipulate to that. I'll stipulate that I it's think defective. It, I understand. I think it gives us the timeline and it gives us... The, understanding this board, the understanding of the history of this case and how we got to where we are. Mr. Uh, Hitchens, Mr. Yanoff, I'm sure you're going to make great arguments and elicit great, uh, testimony on both sides um, that you're going to argue bolsters your case, but I'm going to allow this for the purpose of establishing the history of the case and how we got here. Does it help if I stipulate that it was a defective notice? We can go beyond that and move right on to the next issue. Happy to do that. Okay. But I'm not stipulating that that prompted the filing of another notice. I'm really saying this. Okay, is okay, I think that's where he's going, and that's why it's so relevant. So go ahead, Mr. Hatch. Thank please. you. So with the stipulation <coughs> that there was a defective portion of the B13, there was already marked a ZHB1, which was the March 26, 2018 notice. Do you have a copy of that, sir? <coughs> Give me one moment. No, I was talking to you, Mr. Long.
And uh, what provision of the zoning code do you reference that that's a violation of? One, chapter 181, Article 4, 181.10. Um, and if you could, rather than just read it, can you please explain to the board, how did you come to the conclusion or decision that there was a violation under those sections? By reviewing the pictures, the complaints, and the videos that have been submitted, and confirming the complaints. So, again, if you could explain to the board, how did you decide, because you identify specifically which <coughs> subsections of G are being violated, correct? That's correct. <coughs> if you could, explain to the board why you believed it to be a business that was in violation of those sections. Business activity may, may not use any equipment or process which creates noise, vibration, glare, fumes, uh, odors, odors, I'm sorry, or electric, or electronical interference, including interference between the electronic interception, which is detected in the neighborhood. What about the business did you think was a violation of that? The noise. <laughs> I'm going to ask no comment from the peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah, forgive me, guys. If we could all. No, we could all. Hold on, hold on just a second. Mr. Locke can certainly speak up. But no, sir, you don't have to say anything. Right now is not the time for anyone to say anything. If you are called as a witness <coughs> by the borough or by Mr. Uh, or by Mr. Hanoff, you certainly can testify. At the end, there will be uh, public comment, and you'll have a chance at that time to make public comment. Go ahead, Mr. Richards. Any other provisions that you identified under G that were a violation of? Yes, number seven, a business, business activity shall be conducted only within a dwelling. And what about that? Did you feel it was being violated? I didn't feel that the business was being conducted with him as well. Anything else there you'd like to highlight for the board? Uh, there was four of them. There were two. The business shall employ no employees other than the family members residing in the dwelling. The photo is depicting the family members that were not residing in the dwelling. Okay. Number one, the business activity shall be compatible with the residential use of the property and surrounding residential uses. Okay. And how did you feel that it was not compatible? I felt it was not compatible because the other residential parcels around there weren't doing landscaping. Um, now, <coughs> looking at the language of Section G, um, does it define what type of business it must be in order to satisfy those criteria? No, it does not. If I could refresh your recollection by referring to Section 181-10. That's not a proper objection. That's not a proper way to refresh somebody's recollection. <laughs> you ask him whether looking at the ordinance refreshes a recollection of something he said he doesn't know about. I, I believe, Mr. Hitchens, I think you can you can back up a couple questions. Sure, sure. Mr. Watt, are you familiar with the zoning code for the borough of Jenkins? Are you familiar with every single statement and section within the zoning code? Do you ever have to refer to the zoning code in order to look at or identify specific language within the zoning code? Yes, sir. At this time, Your Honor, I would like to show him the zoning code with regard to 181-10, which is the same section that he identified in there so he can see the exact language that's contained in there. The code is a Why don't you ask him the question? That you're that you're trying to get answered. Sure. And if you can't remember, I think you might be able to refresh. Sure. Understood. Um, Mr. Locke, can any type of business operate within the B1 residential district? Yes, a no impact business. Can. What's a no impact business? It's one that's operated within the dwelling. There's no outside signage, lighting. It's not operated outside, there's no noises, there's no owners. Is there a definition for a no-impact home-based business? Yes, there is. Where is that contained? In the zoning code. What section of the zoning code? 18110. The definition of a no-impact is contained in 18110. Oh, not definition, I'm sorry, I thought you meant description. Uh, 
I'd have to look at the zoning code to know the number of the definition section. At this time, I would ask permission in order to show the witness the definition, which I assume there's got to be a plethora of definitions within there, so we can refer to that. Sure. If you could, please, sir, turn to the definition of no impact. Now, before you, before I ask you any questions regarding the definition, I'd like to turn your attention again back to what was previously marked as B11. And this was your memorandum to the board, correct? Yes. And in that memorandum, you had previously testified, and you actually read into the record the very last paragraph. Is that correct? Yes. Looking at that last paragraph and the definition of no impact business, did those two have any interrelation to each other? Did you refer to that definition at all when you were preparing this memo? I'm sure I referred to this. I don't know what that says. I can't see that far away compared to this. Sure. And you know what? To help move matters along, if I could, bring your attention to the very last sentence. Yeah, both the last sentences are the same. Okay. And what about them are the same? Where it states... Where the vehicular or pedestrian pick up delivery or removal functions to or from the premises in excess of those normally associated with residential use. Okay. So, given the business activities that you believe to be going on at the property, did you believe that they were in excess of those normally associated with residential use? Yes, I did. In what way did you believe that? In the multiple times that the equipment was loaded onto the truck, picking up different locations, and the type of equipment didn't look like the regular residential use. Okay. With that, I have no other questions at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I just remind you that this is an appeal from the zoning officer. The zoning officer's testimony is extremely important. Mr. Yanoff, cross-examination. If I may, thank you. In the preparation of... You made several on-site inspections of the property on one day prior to October 4th of 2017. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and on each of... I'm sorry. When you say on-site, how do you define that? You went out to the property and looked at the property. From the public right-of-way. From the public right-of-way. You never did an on-site inspection. Is that correct? I did not go on the property. You did not walk up to the door, and you did not say to Mr. and Mrs. Downs, I'd like to know whether or not you're operating a commercial business at this location involving landscaping. Did you? No, I did not. Never did. You drove by, and even when you drove by, your memo says you saw no evidence, no visible signs, is what your memo says, of a business being operated at this property. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. And yet, and that's all before October 4th, 2017, right? Yeah, that is... What you're reading out of that memo is from the 16th incident. Okay. Did you do any inspection of any kind? Drive by, knocking on the door, picking up the phone, doing anything after the 2016 investigations? Yes. What did you do? I did inspections from the public right-of-way. Where are they in this memo? If they're not in that memo, I didn't mention them. But you mentioned the ones from 2016. The one where I found there was no business going on. Okay, but your memo, if you look at B11, it specifically says, look at the second page. You provided a summary of findings to the borough. Is that correct? That is correct. And you listed three separate items 
upon which you based your conclusion that a commercial business was being operated at this location. Isn't that right? Yes. One. One is you received an official complaint, pictures, and videos on October 4, 2017, correct? That's the first one. I'm looking at B11. I might not have the same document then. This is what you gave me is B11. Mr. Yano, if you could point to what it is you're referring to. Yes, I'm referring to below you will find a summary of. Would you agree with me, Mr. Yano, if I'm showing you the copy that is in front of Mr. Locke? It starts with below you will find a summary of. Well, that's not the same document as you ordered as B11, Mr. Hitchens. Mr. Hitchens, I have the same document it looks like as Mr. Yano and not what you have. I've never seen that document. It's missing a page. So if we can take one moment. Why don't we ask Ms. Burrow to take a copy. Why don't we take a three minute break so we can figure that out. Okay. That went to the board and went to me and went to Mr. Yanoff was simply missing a page. That is correct. Mr. Yanoff, I've given you a few minutes to look at that. Have you had enough time to look at the second page? Do you have any objection just to simply replacing what we have in front of us or putting page two between page one and three? Assuming that's where it belongs, yes. All right. I'm sure you'll get into it. Mr. Yanoff, please continue your cross-examination. Thank you. Mr. Lack, we've been given a new B11 corrected as indicated by Mr. Moralier. Page one is the same in both in the old document and the new document. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. And it indicates that you conducted site inspections from the public right of way on the property in 2016. Is that correct? That is correct. And is it fair to state, sir, that you did not conduct any site inspections, and by site I mean S-I-G-H-T, inspections of the property after the 2016 investigation? Is that correct? No, I did not. When did you go back? I can see if my dates are on here, but it was during the complaints that I was receiving. But you would agree with me that you did not note that you conducted those kinds of inspections at the property in 2017 after you received the complaints, right? That is correct. And yet you did mention them in 2016. Is that correct? That is correct. Then why didn't you mention them in 2017 when you did so? I don't know. Is it because you didn't conduct any inspections? Objection, argumentative. Well, it's cross-examination. He answered the question that he did. Hold on. He answered the question that he did. Do you have any records? Did do site inspections. So I'd ask you the next question. Do you have any records or notations indicating when these inspections were done and what your findings were? No, I don't. Do you have any independent recollection of when they were done and what your findings were? I know the basic time period during the complaints when I was receiving the complaints. And did you observe any commercial landscaping business activity on the property? Let me finish. Okay. In the 2017 period that we're now talking about? I did not. You did not? Okay. So let's go back to page two of this document. And let's look at the summary of findings regarding the complaints made to the borough. Let's look at the first one of Joseph and Christine Glass, September 20, 2017. Incidentally, sir, before I go into that, are you aware of the fact that Mr. Glass went to jail for harassing? Objection. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Glass. Can I ask the question? I know exactly where he's going with this question. Mr. Hitchens, let's let Mr. Yanoff ask the question. And then maybe it becomes a question that you really like and you won't object. I'll ask it again. Were you aware, sir, that Mr. Glass went to jail for harassing Mr. and Mrs. Downs on frequent occasions? Were you aware of that, sir? And I'm going to object. The answer is yes. I said yes. It's already been answered. 
I don't withdraw my objection, but he already answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take that into account when you were evaluating the truthfulness or the reasons or motivations for the complaints filed by Mr. and Mrs. Glass against their neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Downs? Now don't look at him. <laughs> <laughs> So the, record, so, so the record reflects, Mr. Locke looked at me because I had previously raised an objection with regard to the prior question. Understood. Mr. Locke, okay, and we just, will, we will understand hold on, question. hold on, hold on, stop, stop. Mr. Yano, ask your question again. Mr. Locke, listen to the question. I read that question back there. It was so artfully stated, I don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it again? That's right. <laughs> Is. Question, did you take into account when you were evaluating the truthfulness or the reasons or motives for the complaints filed by Mr. and Mrs. Glass against their neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Downs? That was one. Did you take that fact into consideration? Yes, I took all the facts into consideration. Did you weigh and measure the reasons for Mr. Mrs. Glass filing their complaints on a constant basis against Mr. and Mrs. Downs? I'm going to raise an objection. Uh, if, if Mr. Yanoff is asking this in regards to the uniformity issue that I had raised previously, I have no objection to the question. No, no. Hold on. If he's asking in regard to if there's some sort of specific ill will or motive here, I would object to that as being irrelevant. The question is what it is, and I'm going to to overrule your objection, Mr. Yano, thank you. Did you take that into consideration at all when you made your evaluation as to what was going on on the Downs property? I took everything into consideration on what I made my evaluation. Including the fact that Mr. and Mrs. Glass went, or Mr. Glass went to jail for harassing his neighbors? I don't actually know when he went to jail, but I knew that there was police issues going on. Okay. And you knew that there was animosity between Mr. and Mrs. Glass and Mr. and Mrs. Downs, correct? I did know that. You did that. And you know that that was directed against Mr. and Mrs. Downs from Mr. and Mrs. Glass, correct? Objection. Relevant. I think it's very relevant. Go ahead, Mr. <laughs> did, I know? did you know that the animosity ran from Mr. and Mrs. Glass to Mr. and Mrs. Downs and not the other way? It was my impression that it ran in both places. But Mr. and Mrs. Downs weren't arrested. Objection. Cross examination. Cross examination. Cross examination doesn't give you carte blanche to, to argue with the witness. Ask your next I'm not question. I'm asking the question. But let's go. Okay, so let's look at the summary of your findings regarding the complaint submitted by Joseph and Christine Glass to the borough on September 20th, 2017. The September 20th, 2017 document is B3 in the pile of documents that your attorney has prepared for us. <coughs> um, one moment. Your first, your first bullet point is that the borough received phone calls regarding a business being operated out of 221 and 301 Runway Avenue. If I could interject, which documents are you referring to B3, now? B3, I believe. Well, no. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at B11 and oh. as it relates to B3. So, so I just, have a moment to get B11. Yeah, with it's all get B11. <laughs> which page Mr. Yanoff on? Mr. Yanoff, B11, which page? Where are you looking? Direct all of this, please. Uh, the new second page. <coughs> second page, B11. Thank you. Do Mr. and Mrs. Dan, I'm sorry, did you have an opportunity to look at that one bullet point, first bullet point at, at the top of the page? Okay. Do you know who lives in 221, running me? I don't know the name, but I know the relation. <coughs> What's the relation? Uh, the mother of the Downs. Do you believe that a business is being operated out of 221 Money Me? I'm going to object to relevance. We're here on a 301, not 221. Mr. Well, Yanoff, what is the relevance? The relevance is it's contained as one of the reasons for his findings 
But this document, B11, B11, B11 was offered as the rationale for Mr. Locke going forward step by step to issuing the violation notice. I'm entitled to inquire as to the, the specifics that are contained within B11. I have, I have no objection if the question is whether or not a violation was issued for 221. I wouldn't have any objection with regard to any specific findings or determinations to why it was or was not issued. I didn't go there. I just asked him whether he believed that a violation, that it was a business operating under 221. So if he wants to ask, so if Mr. Yanov wants to ask the question, was the violation notice issued for 221, I have no objection to that question. And I'm not asking that question. I don't see what the difference is between what his question is and what I propose. Because it was used as a basis. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm having trouble thinking. Mr. Hitchens, you introduced this document. I'm going to allow Mr. Yanov to ask a limited amount of questions about 221 for that reason. But it is not why we're here today, so please brief. I understand. Did you believe that a violation, a business was being conducted at 221 Learning Front, I mean? The evidence that was provided in the complaints did not lead me to believe that there was a business being run out of 221. And yet you received phone calls that a business was being run out of there, is that correct? That is correct. And those calls came from Mr. or Mrs. Glass? That is correct. Do you know who? No, I honestly don't know. Okay, and you didn't identify that person in this memo, is that correct? I didn't identify who called. Who called, and you didn't identify the owner of 221 either, right? No, I did not. Did you go out and take a look at 221? Again, I'm going to object. We're going down a path here. There was never a notice of violation issued for 221. Correct. And I think you made your point, Mr. Yanov, and please move on. Okay. You received an official complaint, pictures and videos. Do we have the videos? Yes, we do. Why aren't they here tonight? The videos depicted what's in the pictures for what I wrote a violation on. There are videos that you can look at, and I don't know the rest of the case if they're going to be presented as evidence. It doesn't do any good to throw them at me. I mean, it's your burden, not mine. It says in their third bullet point, after reviewing the complaint, pictures and video, it was depicted that the photos dated August 17th appear to show David Downs loading landscaping equipment, which you identify as a lawnmower, backpack blower, and weed whacker into a truck. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Do people who own homes in B1 residential districts, other than the Downses, own lawnmowers, backpack blowers, or weed whackers? I would imagine people own lawnmowers. I don't know if people own backpack blowers, and I'd also imagine that people own weed whackers. You would imagine that, right? They're equipment that somebody could use to landscape their own property, isn't it? Yeah, it would be much smaller in nature on the lawnmower, but you're correct. They certainly could, isn't that right? And people own trucks. Oh, one question at a time. I didn't hear an answer to that. They certainly could. They certainly could, right? They could own lawnmowers, yes. Okay, and they could own weed whackers and backpack blowers too, couldn't they? They certainly could. Okay, and they could also own a truck. Right? Yeah, they're allowed to own a truck. They sure are. And they're also allowed to transport their own landscaping equipment in the truck that they own, even if they live in a B1 residential district. Isn't that right? Well, if you're transporting commercial equipment to perform work somewhere else, then no, you're not allowed to do that. Where is the identification of the lawnmower, backpack blower, and weed whacker as commercial equipment? Where is that identification in this document that you used as the basis for the issuance of the violation notice? It would be in the picture. Okay, well, so let's look at the pictures. Take out B3, please. I'm going to raise an objection here. During the direct examination of Mr. Locke, counsel had objected repeatedly, had a continuing objection, to my having the witness identify or describe any of the information contained therein, including the photographs or written letters. Mr. Yanoff is now asking for the witness to go through the same photographs that I would have gone through during direct examination. Actually, that's not true. What I objected to was the narratives 
that were in, in the documents. And Mr. Marlier, you specifically overruled my objections to these other items. And Mr. Um, Hitchens, almost forgot your name. Mr. Hitchens was free to question his witness with respect to any of those other documents because you overruled my objections. Plus, I'm entitled now, if I want to open this door, he's entitled to redirect with respect to these pictures oh, to the extent of my, of my cross-examination. Go ahead with your question. Thank you, sir. Can we look at the documents? Sir? Are we on B3? We are on B3. Can you look? Don't look at the I didn't ask you about the, uh, the narrative. I asked you about the pictures. Look at the pictures. Would the board be helpful, at least to counsel, Mr. Gatter could identify which photograph he's going to there? He's going to let him, let him go through, Mr. Let's look at the photograph years. dated August 24, 2017 at 6.38 p.m. Does that show David Downs loading, lands, loading land, landscaping equipment as you've identified it into a truck? No, it does not. It does not. Let's look at August 24, 2017. And it says, weed whacker at his feet. Can you identify for me where that is? Can I ask clarification where what is? The, the clarification. If he, if he can answer the question, he can answer the question. Mr. Yanoff, if he can, Mr. Yanoff can ask a, a more where, specific I'll make it clear for you where that weed whacker actually is. By behind his right foot and it extends towards the home. So that little silver thing that's about three feet behind him, is that's what you're looking at? Yeah, and these aren't my notes. I, I understand that. I'm, I'm merely using them for identification purposes. Because, Mr. Locke, you've, you've indicated that these are the photos that led you to your conclusion that a commercial activity and landscaping business was being operated at the property. Isn't that right? That is correct. That is correct. Photos, so they received the videos. <coughs> so the, these, uh, that's correct. So this, le this picture, August 24, 2017, at 6.38 p.m., that shows what you say is, what, what is depicted on, by somebody else's notes as a weed whacker at his feet is one of the reasons why you believe the landscaping business was operated. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I mean, I see a weed whacker in the picture. A weed whacker that anybody could own if they were landscaping their own business. Isn't that right? Landscaping. And landscaping their own properties. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's look at the September 18, 2017, 621 picture. <coughs> September 18, 2017, 621. That appears to be the back of somebody walking on the lawn. That's what it shows, right? Okay. Doesn't show any landscaping business there, does it? It appears to be the same person that's standing by the weed whacker and there's a power back blower sitting there uh, by the gate that's over the fence. Not being used. No, he's not using it. Not using it at all. And in fact, it's a power back, I'm sorry, it's a backpack blower which could be used by anybody who owns a piece of property in the B B1 residential district. <coughs> that is correct. Okay, it doesn't necessarily, by the mere fact that it's there, indicate that there's a commercial landscaping business being operated at that property, does it? No, the only thing that would make you wonder about the picture is it's not his property. So it's not his property. So he's, cu he's cutting somebody else's lawn? If you say so, sir. Okay. Um, just curious as to why you say that. Now, September 18, 2017, 622, that's a picture of the, of the blower? Yes, that's a close-up. Close-up of the blower. Okay. And September 18, 2017, 626 appears to be somebody talking on the phone. <laughs> Can you explain to me how that indicates that a commercial landscaping business is being conducted on the property? Sir, so not all these pictures depict that. But, but they, these are the pictures that you relied upon, though, right? Is there some of them? There's a stack of them. I understand that, but it's a, it's these September 20th pictures that you call out are the ones that you relied upon. Objection. Ask and answer. Mr. Locke already stated that, he, that some of these pictures do not, in fact, show a commercial landscaping <coughs> business is being operated. Why don't you ask about this specific one and if it specifically goes to landscaping? I, I thought I was, but okay. Um, the next picture is September 18, 2017, at 626, and appears to be, I'll suggest to you that it's Mr. Downs, 
sort of looks like him. And he appears to be holding something in his hand, right? Walking away from the front door. Is this a picture that shows a commercial landscaping activity being no, operated? It no, it does not. <coughs> okay, now let's look at our August 17, 2017, at 621. Got it? And that's a picture of, of a lawnmower on the back of a truck with the blower on the side of the truck. Is that right? You are correct. And you've already told us that people who live in the B1 residential district can have a lawnmower and can have a blower and can have a truck. Correct? Yes, sir. And, in, in, and they can have all three. And in and of itself, it doesn't indicate that there's a commercial landscaping business being conducted at running. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, let's look at August 17, 2017 at 621 appears to be another view of the truck, the blower, and the lawnmower. Right? Yes. And the same with August 17, 2017 at 621. <coughs> okay. And the other piece of equipment would probably be the uh, weed whacker, right? Which anybody can own in a B1 residential district. Right? And use on their own properties, right? Or they can help their neighbor out by mowing somebody else's lawn, right? It's a possibility, right? Uh, sure. sure. Okay. October 21, 2017, or 16, at 12.57 p.m. I must confess, sir, I have no idea what that is. And I only know what it is because I saw it. Uh, it the picture probably doesn't show you Don't show you anything. So this B3 contains pictures of lawn, of, of lawn mowing equipment and a truck that doesn't necessarily depict a commercial landscaping business in a B1 residential district. As defined, uh, a business is loading this material, on, this equipment onto your vehicle and going to another property and performing a service. Hypothetically, sir. If I own this equipment and I decide to mow the lawn of my neighbor because I'm a good neighbor, but the only way that I can get the equipment there is to load it on the back of my pickup truck, would I be operating a commercial landscaping business at my property? Well, yes or no? It's tricky dealing with hypotheticals. No, no, it isn't. It's, it's allowed. And Mr. Warren, we're going to tell you that. I'm not going to argue with him. I think he's answering your question. Mr. Lott, go ahead. Uh, you can help your neighbor, was that the question? Can you help your neighbor? The hypothetical was that I own a property. Uh -huh. I want you to assume that I own a property. And I've decided that I'm going to help out a neighbor. who so may or may not be infirm, but a neighbor. And I'm going to do it but I, by cutting her grass and cleaning her yard. And the only way that I can get my equipment there is to load it on the back of my truck and drive it over to my neighbor's house so that I can perform those neighborly services to her. Am I, with that hypothetical in mind, in your opinion, am I conducting a commercial landscaping business? Yes. How <laughs> Suppose I don't get paid for it. <laughs> then explain yourself. Well, how, how does that translate into my operating a commercial landscaping business? equipment onto your truck and perform a service and then bring that equipment back to your property that has been defined as running a business. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Suppose I don't get paid for I don't see anything in the code that mentions the fact. So if I do it out of the goodness of my heart, you're going you're gonna to cite that person, hypothetically, for running a landscape business out of his house. If they have equipment that isn't on typical residential equipment, and they're putting it in a truck and they're going to other properties and performing services that can't somebody complaining about it continually. Doesn't the, the operation of a commercial business involve business activity? And not neighbor let me finish and not neighborly activity? Objection argumentative. 
what's, I don't know what he means by neighborly activity versus... Based upon... I'll, 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 I'll read the question. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a little trouble hearing because of, of the people in the gallery talk. And I need to be able to hear Mr. Yanoff. The board definitely needs to be able to hear Mr. Yanoff and the stenographer. Needs to <coughs> Go ahead, Mr. Yanoff. Is it your testimony here today that if I own a truck and I load my personal landscaping equipment on the back of that truck and take it over to a neighbor's property to mow that person's lawn out of the goodness of my heart, that you would define that as a commercial landscaping business? I think the court would define it as that. Now, would you? I would have to because that's what the court does. And you base that on what? On the recent case. All right. We'll move on. I think I've made my point. On the September 25, 2017 complaint, <clears throat> let's look at that. I'll ask the board which B4. Yeah. Okay. Can you look at the picture on B4? Yes. First, do you know what property that, that picture is? That, that truck is looked part of? And what that picture shows is a pickup truck that has a lawnmower in the back, right? That is correct. And that is another reason why you cited the Downs's for operating a commercial landscaping business? This was a picture that was definitely considered when we looked at the videos, pictures, and reviewed the complaints that were So again, hypothetically, anytime I load my lawnmower on the back of my truck, I would be committing a commercial, I would be operating a commercial landscaping business in your opinion. Objection asked to answer repeatedly. Not with, not with respect so, to this. So not with opinion. respect to this picture, Mr. Hitchens, I'm sure we're on redirect. You're going to be able to clarify some of these points, but Mr. Yanov has a uh, right to question about this photograph. The question was about the photo or was it the hypothetical this photograph, does that depict the operation of a commercial landscaping business? No, I don't think this is right. inclusive evidence of that. Good, thank you. But it is something that you relied upon, right? Something that I consider. shows somebody pushing a lawnmower up a driveway. Is that right? That's correct. <coughs> That's all it shows? Well, they're in the street and they're going up towards the driveway. Okay. That doesn't show cutting anybody's grass. Does it? <coughs> no, it and uh, the second photograph is the truck that we previously showed, saw and ramps to allow equipment to be loaded on the truck. Is that correct? Yes, doesn't right. show anybody cutting any grass or anything, does it? No, it does not. Doesn't show any landscaping business, does it? No, it doesn't no. show landscaping and, this, and the same with the next photograph, September 26, 2017, right? In fact, that only shows what appears to be ramps, right? Yes, that's okay. right. That doesn't show any landscaping business either, does it? No, it doesn't. And when, when you receive these specific complaints on what appears to be an almost everyday basis, did you actually drive out to the Downs' residence and take a look and see what was going on so you could verify what was represented to you yourself? I made several drive-bys on this property during this time. Uh, this was a hot day of activity for a couple of years, so I would come down here and I would go up around the And did, at any time did you observe any landscaping business being conducted? when you did your drive-bys? You know, I saw one time, I saw Dave with the truck totally loaded up uh, with landscape equipment and he was... Landscape equipment, define that for me, please. A commercial uh, lawnmower that you wouldn't see in a residential district, you know, 
And tell me how that tells you that they were that somebody was running a commercial landscaping business out of that particular property. Well, that's where the equipment came from. How do you know that? Did you see it come from there? No, not this one. You didn't, right? Mm -hmm. Could have come from anywhere, right? Yeah, you're right. I'm right. I know. It happens every once in a while. <coughs> Now, we're finally getting to B6, which is where we started this little trip. Let's look at the photographs of B6. First photograph is dated October 3, 2017 at 1.16 p.m., right? That is correct. Shows a truck with a lawnmower on the back. That is correct. Let's show it giving activity. No, I but no activity. No indication that a commercial landscaping business was being operated based upon that picture, right? That is correct. And the same for October 3, 2017 at 127, which appears to be a truck in the street. <coughs> Calm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yes, it was, right? Yes, it was. Can't even see whether there's anything in the truck, can you? That's on a public right way, right? It's on a public right way. Looks like the lawnmower is in there in the neighborhood. Well, you might be able to see the next one, October 3, 2017, and 127. It appears to be that truck with a lawnmower in the back, right? Yes, I'm in different locations. Not in the same location as the previous one. Mr. Mr. Lock, can you speak up? It doesn't appear to me to be in the same location. But it doesn't appear to have to be performing any landscaping businesses, any landscaping services, does it? No, it looks like the truck's in your car from driving. Certainly there's no commercial landscaping business being conducted there, are there? No, not the left truck. And October 3, 2017, at 127. I believe that's the same as one of How about the next one? October 3, 2017, also noted as 127. I can see equipment in the back, but it it's a lot of trees and vegetation between But it certainly doesn't indicate that any landscaping business is being conducted, right? Just a truck with lens, with with the uh, lawnmowers behind it. Anyway. Okay. The next picture is of, of some interest to me. The next picture is October three, two thousand seventeen. Shows a picture of the Grace um, Presbyterian Church sign. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Do you know where Mr. Downs works? Mm, I don't know. If I have heard, but I mean I don't know. If I suggested to you that Mr. Downs works as a sexton at the Grace Presbyterian Church, and as part of his responsibilities, he takes care of the grounds at the Grace Presbyterian Church, would that surprise you? It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know it could be true, but it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. So if Mr. Downs, is in the course of his employment, was taking care of the grounds at the Grace Presbyterian Church, Using using lawnmowers and, wind, and weed whackers and blowers as part of that, would he be conducting a commercial landscaping business out of his house? Now remember, this is part of his job. If it, no, if he was being paid as a job and he, you know, for goodwill, brought equipment and performed these tasks as part of his job, that would be different than if somebody hired him to do landscaping. And that same goodwill with respect to an infirm neighbor and cutting the infirm neighbor's grass. Why is that different? It's different because it's multiple locations. How do you know that? How do you know that? I'm going to object. What, what multiple well, locations? Well, what's the nature of your objection? <laughs> Mr. Gallup is not allowing him to finish his answer. So I, I think I should just jump in. It doesn't need an objection. <clears throat> He's correct. Can you let him finish his answer? 
What multiple locations <coughs> are you able to identify? I see one on Rodman in one picture, and I see one Which on picture was that? Mr. Yanoff, you just cut him off again. Let him finish. I have a nasty habit of doing it. You know who owns that? First of all, is there any identification in here of what that address is? No, it's just from your memory. Just from your memory? Do you know who lives there? I don't know the person's name off the top of my head. Do you know, you don't know anything about that person? I know things about that person, but I don't know their name is what you're asking. Okay. But there's no picture here that shows that any landscaping <coughs> activity is being conducted there, is there? Just somebody walking on the property? I think earlier I, I identified a, a flower and a weed whacker, and I would consider that landscaping. How about landscaping activity? Did you see any landscaping activity? And I'm going to object to the form of the question. I don't know what you mean by landscaping activity. Do you know what I mean by landscaping activity? Sure. Cutting the grass, using the weed whacker, using the blower. Let's just leave it at that. No. None, right? Okay. Peg, you don't have any idea why whoever it is that's depicted in that picture was even at that property, do you? No, one can only surmise. Why don't surmise. I'm not asking you to guess. Mr. Yellow. Objection. Mr. Yellow, I, he's, he's answering the question. Well, I don't believe that he is, but go ahead. <coughs> surmise away. If somebody takes a blower and a weed whacker and sets it in the yard, I would assume that they were going to use it. And tell me how you know from that surmising that a commercial landscaping business was being operated from the Runnymede property. Make that connection for me. Okay. Equipment was loaded up on Runnymede. How do you know that? How do you think that? How do you know that? Mr. Yanoff, Mr. Yanoff, hold on. You at, Mr. Yanoff, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Mr. Yanoff, you asked him a question. He was about to, I'm pretty sure, go through a series of thoughts in his head of different things he observed to tell you why he came to the conclusion he did, he came to, which is the question you asked. You have to be able to let him finish that. Right, okay, go ahead. Can you repeat the question? No. Can you repeat it for me? Actually, I think I asked you, how do you make the connection? between that picture of somebody standing next to a weed whacker and the fact that a commercial landscaping business is being operated out of the running meat property. Okay, the connection is that the equipment was loaded on the truck as you stated in the pictures. Sir, are you, are you, have you stopped for a moment? Because I want to ask you a question with respect to what you just said. Sure, I'll stop. Yeah. Thank you. Tell me, sir, how you know that that equipment was loaded at one location and transport it to this location on the same day to perform commercial landscaping business. Tell me how you know of your knowledge. I'm going to object to the form of that question. We've gone through a series of photographs for <coughs> half an hour to 40 minutes plus that involved him identifying <coughs> the, the 301 Miami property, the, 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 the truck, all of that. It, 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 I'm not sure I understand what the so, form of the question is here. So I think he can answer it. Okay. Actually, I want to correct one thing that Mr. Hitchens said. I've yet to hear that the equipment was loaded at 301 Running Bay. Understood. I think Mr. Locke, I think, I think Mr. Yanoff's asking you to walk him through why it is, based on these photographs, you believe there was landscaping at this property. Is that correct, Mr. Yanoff? At this particular property, connected to the operation of a commercial landscaping business at the Runnymede property. 
And the connection that I made from the, from the uh, <coughs> photos and videos is that this equipment was loaded on the truck when running. It's, it's in the truck when running. Now it's on Robin in the yard, around the yard. And that tells you that a commercial landscaping business is being done. Is that a question? question? Yes. No. Um, yes, that was part of my determination. <coughs> is it fair to state, sir, that your determination is made essentially based upon the pictures <coughs> and the videos that you were supplied with? Is that correct? And the complaints. That's correct. And the, and the complaints, right? Not because of your own visual inspection. Not because of things that I saw. That is correct. <clears throat> During the period from the first notice of violation of December 7, 2017, and the second violation of March of 2018, you didn't receive any complaints of any commercial landscaping activity at the location, did you? I not believe I did. So if your notice of March 26, 2018 says that the current conditions at 301 Runnymede Avenue, that current, <coughs> there were no current conditions at 301 Runnymede Avenue, that lent itself to a determination that there was a commercial landscaping business being operated at that time. Is that correct? <coughs> Mr. Janoff, just, just to help me and, and, and help this board. Where Third line you? down. Third line down. <coughs> On your page. March 26, 2018 letter, which is ZHB <coughs> third line down. Gotcha. That is one of the four things listed as to why I did this violation last year. I'm not sure I understand your answer, sir. I apologize. Um, you asked me. Let me ask it again. Yes, Maybe my, my question wasn't as clear as I would have liked it to be. Your letter of your notice of violation of March 26, 2018 says, after careful review of the current conditions at 301 Running Meat Avenue, can you tell me what current conditions there were on March 26, 2018, which led you to say that the current conditions were the operation of a commercial landscaping business? Yes, um, I can explain that. I know we're stopping in the middle of a sentence at a comma that explained it better, but to just explain that, the current conditions were the complaints that had been filed. From October 2017. Through whatever date they were filed, that's correct. Now let's make sure we have the dates correct. <coughs> Your counsel can correct me, but it appears to me that the, the pictures and the photographs all relate to a period in September and October of 2017. Am I correct on that? Yes, other than the 61. Other than the 2016 one where you found no violation. Correct? That is correct. Right. So again, I ask you, in March of 2018, what current conditions were there? that led you to believe that a landscaping business was being operated out of 301 running The current conditions I was referring to was the photos and videos that had been submitted to case control. Which were six months prior. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Which were six months prior. Not current, but six months prior. Is Objection, right? ask and answer. No, not yet. Uh, Mr. Yanoff, ask your question. I did. I'm overruling his objection, so you can ask that question. The current conditions, I understand. The pictures are from September, October 2017. That is correct. They are not current to March of 2018, are they? The case was current. Those pictures are not current to that date. But you said current condition of the property. And I also said complaints filed in relevant borough codes and ordinances. That relate back to 2017, six months prior. I did not say that. Sir, what I'm asking you is, what conditions existed on the property on March 26, 2018, 
that support your position that a commercial landscaping business was being operated as of the date of your notice of violation? Objection. Ask and answer. I don't. I don't think it has been, Mr. Hitchens. Answer the question, Mr. Long. You're asking me if there were if these pictures are from that March 26th date. Yeah, I'm merely asking you, sir, and I apologize if I'm not clear. I'm merely asking you what current conditions existed on March 26, 2018, which resulted in a violation notice dated March 26, 2018, in which you said that the current conditions of the property led you to believe that a commercial landscaping business was then being operated at the property. And what I'm answering you is that by current conditions of the property, I mean the ongoing investigation, the photos, the videos, and the complaints. What investigation did you do from, uh, from other than looking at pictures that have been provided to you by somebody else? As I explained earlier to you, I did drive-by inspections from the public park. And did you see any landscaping, commercial landscaping business activities in your drive-bys during the period March 26, 2018? I did not. I, I want to understand your, um, your testimony concerning the no-impact home-based business, correct? I just want to understand. In your letter of March 26, 2018, which was ZHB number one, which you have in front of you, you listed a series of criteria as to what would be a no-impact home-based business. Isn't that right? That is correct. Okay. And no-impact home-based business are permitted uses within the, or in the B1 residential district, right? That is correct. Okay. <coughs> is the cutting of grass and the maintaining of your lawn and yard an activity that is compatible with the residential use of property and surrounding residential uses? No, I feel that if you were cutting your own yard, as you stated, that that's not a commercial business. Okay, I'm not asking you. I'm asking whether I did not apologize. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you whether or not the cutting of grass <coughs> in your, on your property or your neighbor's property, for that matter, would be compatible with the residential use of the property and surrounding residential uses. I think it would depend upon circumstances as if you were, how many houses you were cutting, what you were doing. If you were walking to your next door neighbor, as you said. Or driving to your next door neighbor. Well, I think if you start loading equipment on the truck and going to various locations, I, I think that that would be considered. A other than the Rodman Street location that you identified, what other locations were you able to observe or provided be, be provided with information that were, that were excuse me that the what the, the lawn cutting was taking place on other properties? Only on the Grace picture and the Rodman picture. Grace, where Mr. Downs works and maintains the property, is that correct? That's what you've said. And what you told us you would not consider to be the operation of a commercial landscaping business, right? What I said was if it was his job and he did that at his own goodwill, brought his own equipment and took care of it, no, I didn't consider that a landscaping business. Okay, so the only, I'm sorry, the only other property that you're able to locate is the, that you were able to identify was the Rodman Street property, is that right? That is correct. Did you know that, do you know of your own knowledge whether there were any employees of this so-called business? I know that people that weren't living in the house were assisting in the pictures. Do you know whether they were related to the people who lived in the house? I believe that it was David's son. David's son? Okay. I don't know if he was residing in the house. Or <coughs> but you don't know, I'm sorry, you don't know whether he was an employee of the business, do you? No, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know that. <coughs> Do I understand you to say that the operation of a lawnmower and a weed whacker and a blower would create noise, vibration, glare, fumes, odors, or electrical or electronic interference, including interference with radio or television reception, which is detectable in the neighborhood? 
I think it would create noise, and I think it would create odor. I don't think the code requires it. It creates all of the things that you need. So if I owned a lawnmower in a B1 residential district, and early Sunday morning I decided to go out and mow my lawn, I would be operating a no-impact home business? Objection. Be merely because, let me finish, merely because my lawnmower, which I probably had in service for 10 years, it creates noise and odor. Objection. What I, what What's I, the nature of your objection, sir? Uh, Mr. Yanoff is posing a hypothetical. I have no objection to hypotheticals in general. However, his hypothetical assumes the individual is cutting his own lawn. As Mr. As Mr. Locke has testified repeatedly, he does not consider somebody who's cutting their own lawn to be operating a business. So I don't know what the objection is. I think he can answer the question, whatever that hypothetical may be, the way he's going to answer it. Go ahead, Mr. Yanoff. So I guess if the if this court staff could read back the hypothetical, as I believe Mr. Yanov had stated, let's, 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 his let's, own law. Let, let's solve this. I'll ask it a different way. <clears throat> if I decided to run to, to mow my lawn and my neighbor's lawn at 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning with my lawn mower that I haven't serviced for 10 years, and it made noise and spit out dirt and sent out a gasoline odor, would I be conducted, conducting a no-impact home business? Not under those circumstances. Thank you. This so-called commercial landscaping business that you've identified as the violation, can you tell us what portion of that business is being conducted within the dwelling? So that, that number 7 in your 181-10G7, you have no knowledge as to whether or not any business, well, let me ask that question. Do you have any knowledge of whether any business activity is being conducted within the premises of 301 Not within the building. Okay, thank you. So that 7 really doesn't apply, right? No, it does, unless you're cutting grass inside the house. Well, but you're not cutting grass inside the house. Sorry. It's right. so, conducted only in the dwelling. You said that you're outside the house. No, you're not in the dwelling. Now, what I'm saying by do I know if business is being conducted in the home, I don't know if there's an electronic business in the home taking order that that type of thing. That's my point. You don't know whether a commercial business activity is actually being operated within this home, do you? Not within the home. Thank you. took place on December 7th. You testified and one of your exhibits, I forget which one it is, It's on B11. On B, the new B11. The B11 on the third page, the next and last paragraph, you said a compliance letter has been drafted as well as a request for a meeting with David and Margaret Downs. You see that in there? Next and last paragraph, page three. Yes, I do. Okay. I believe you testified, and please correct me if I'm wrong that you requested a meeting with Mr. and Mrs. Downs, and the purpose of that meeting was to try to work out this problem that you envisioned was going on. Is that correct? Did you testify to that? I know I testified that a meeting was trying to be set up, um, and the purpose was to <coughs> solve the issues that were going on down the line. And that meeting was ultimately scheduled for December 7th of 2017, isn't that right? It was ultimately scheduled for several days before. But it took place on that date, right? We met on the Okay. And on that date, instead of working this out, you actually gave them 
The notice of violation, which has been marked as B12. Isn't that right? That is not, not B12. Uh, B13, I think. You actually gave that to them, right? Yes, we handed that to them. Then, would you mind explaining to me, sir, how that goes under the uh, canopy of working things out? If you violated them on on the same day that you asked to have a meeting to settle it with with them? Well, I would I would draw your attention to the actions to be taken to answer that question. Where are you looking, Mr. I found um, actions to be taken were on B13. It's in bold. And one of those actions to be taken, I see that, sir. It says, upon receipt of this notice, such violations shall be discontinued immediately. But the Downs has told you that they weren't conducting a commercial business. And didn't they tell you that? They did say that. Okay, and they, but you didn't go out there around December 7th to see whether a commercial business was being operated out of there, did you? No, sir. I, I did not think they'd be cutting grass on December 7th. Okay, but they told you they weren't. So what activity would you have liked them to discontinue immediately on December 7th, 2017, if they weren't conducting any activity at all and told you that? Then I would go to the second bullet point where it says, please contact the borough by placing and writing your intent to comply. Or file a request for the zoning hearing. If they weren't conducting a commercial business, then tell me, sir, what they would be asking, what what they would be writing to comply with, or appealing to the zoning hearing board. Based on my investigation by the complaints, the videos, and the pictures, I felt they were wrong because they said they weren't. Did not mean everything that I had considered went away. So what I would want them to do, if if they're not running one and we want them to discontinue it, discontinuing it would be fairly simple, wouldn't you agree? I'm not going to ask you questions. Well, you can ask me that question well, because I'll ask it right back to you. Okay. If they said to you, I'm not running a business, so therefore there's nothing for me to discontinue, why would they have to file an appeal to the zoning hearing board? They wouldn't. They would have only had to put in writing their intent to comply with that. Did you receive a letter from Attorney Gross that says just that? A letter from their prior attorney that said, we are not conducting a business. Isn't that a satisfaction of that condition? That was one thing that, that first off, that wasn't them putting in writing. That was one thing he said in that. He said everything is over with at this point, which was wrong. He said if not to talk to the Downs again, to went through him, and then he withdrew as the attorney. But he did do what you said. He contacted the borough on their behalf mm -hmm. in writing their intent to comply. Isn't that right? I'm going to object hearsay. Uh, <coughs> council had raised numerous objections to hearsay for my use of letters from other individuals. If Mr. Yanoff wants to call Mr. Gross in as a witness in order to get that document or information in there, he's certainly free to. But in terms of what is contained or what the intent was behind the letter, obviously Mr. Locker had no idea what the intent was by the behind the letter, only Mr. Gross would know who is, I don't know if he's here or not. I'll ask your question again, please. Let me ask it this way. Did you receive a letter from an appointed representative, an attorney for Mr. and Mrs. Downs, saying that they are not conducting a <coughs> business and are, won't be conducting a, re, a business? I would need to agree with that. You don't have any recollection of that? I have a recollection of it. I don't want to guess on the record. Uh, I do appreciate that, but I'm not going to argue with you on that. <coughs> Did you receive a letter from my office that essentially said the same thing? That they were not conducting a business? Mr. Locke, if you remember. I'm sorry. If you remember, sir. Uh, I received a letter from your office. I'm not sure you come to I would have to remember. Well, I don't have a copy of it, but we can make copies of this.
going to mark this, Mr. Worthy, or how would you want me to mark this? Uh, applicant one. Okay. And I'll represent to you that we'll get copies of this for you. I, I, do, I only have the original. I wasn't aware that this was going to become an issue. Considering we may be coming back for a second. You think so? Right? Yeah. I think yeah. we'll get copies of it. Okay. I'm going to show you a letter, sir, which is marked applicant one, which is dated January 9th. 2018, which is addressed to Sean Pete Kilkenny, the solicitor for the borough, and shows a copy to you as the borough manager in Zoning. So, 2018, Mr. Gayoff, I'm sorry. To that January 9, 2018. says that it's a letter from Peter Friedman in my office, isn't that right? Yes. Okay. And it indicates that, that the Mr. and Mrs. Downs are not violating the township ordinances, is that correct? Specifically, they're not operating a commercial business. Okay. And that's a letter, as you requested in the, in your notice of violation in December, is that right? Yes, in December. So. Right. Approximately one month later, is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. March 26, 2018, at the very bottom of the first page, you indicated that the property must be in compliance no later than April 23, 2018, and you asked Mr. and Mrs. Downs to contact you as the zoning enforcement officer. I assume that means you, right? That would be, that would be To arrange for a re-inspection of the property to confirm compliance, right? That is correct. Okay. Did you go out to the property to perform any re-inspection? From the public right away. And did you observe any commercial landscaping activity? No, I did not. So is the property was the property in compliance as of April 23, 2018? The property didn't have a, a commercial business operating during the period that I was there. So Mr. and Mrs. Downs, even assuming that you're correct, that they were operating a commercial landscaping business, brought their property into compliance prior to April 23, 2018, to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief. Is that correct? No, I wouldn't agree with that. What violation were they, were they conducting? During my visits, is that what you said? During my visits, I mean. I'm asking you. This letter says, please commence action to bring your property into compliance with the foregoing provisions of the Jenkintown Borough Zoning Code immediately upon receipt of this notice letter. Did I read that correctly? You read that correctly. Okay. Do you know whether Mr. and Mrs. Downs brought their property into compliance, assuming, for the sake of argument, 
without admitting that they were in fact commit, uh, <coughs> conducting a landscaping business of the property? Did they bring it into compliance as you insisted in your official notice of zoning code violations? During my drive-by inspections, I did not know, recognize or notice commercial business. So they were in compliance? And have you, have you conducted other, strike that, how many drive-by inspections did you conduct between March 26, 2018 and today of the property on Runnymead Avenue to see whether or not Mr. and Mrs. Downs are still in compliance? I would say a few. And in any of those, did you see any activity that would meet your definition of a commercial landscaping business being operated in a B1 residential district. I did not. And you certainly did not call anybody to arrange for a re-inspection of the property to confirm compliance, did you? That is correct. I have no further questions. Thank you. Mr. Hitchens, redirect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Locke, I'm going to do my best to try to work backwards from the line of questioning um, that you received from uh, Mr. Yano. So let's start with um, the compliance question. You were asked during cross-examination about whether or not the property was in compliance as of April 23rd, 2018. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, do you recall, did the, did the property owners actually file an appeal of that notice of violation? Yes. Uh, in your experience, do property owners typically file an appeal of violation if they're currently in compliance? If, if the violation is running a business, then, then uh, can you repeat your question? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Would you expect a property owner who has received a notice of violation who came into compliance to file an appeal of a notice of violation? Yeah. Why wouldn't you expect them to file that appeal? I wouldn't expect them to file an appeal if it was in would you agree with me that under the MPC, even after you file a notice of violation, the municipality can't take any further action unless they go back to the magisterial district court in order to post fines and penalties? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. I think it's within Mr. Locke's purview as a zoning So, so to be correct, if you issue this notice of violation and the person comes into compliance and you take no further action. What happens? If they come into compliance and I take no further action, that means I don't issue a citation? Meaning you don't go to the magisterial district judge for fines and penalties. What happens? Would it be fair to say nothing happens? That's what I would assume that So essentially all this notice of violation is doing is informing the property owner that they're currently not in compliance and asking them to in fact come into compliance. And in this situation, these property owners actually filed an appeal of your determination that they were ever out of compliance. Is that correct? Yes. So one of your requests, I believe that was identified earlier, in your December 7, 2017, this is B13 letter was bullet point number two on page two was that they advise you that their intent to comply uh, with the zoning code. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now you were handed a copy of what was identified as appellant one, which was a letter from Mr. Yano's office to the borough regarding compliance. Is that correct? That's correct. Anywhere in that letter does Mr. Yano state that the property owners intend to, going forward, remain in compliance with the borough code. Objection. He's trying to discredit his own witness on direct examination. He testified that this letter satisfied that requirement. I, I think it's, it's redirect. He's, he's clarifying Mr. Locke's position. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Locke, can I finish my point here? Mr. Locke testified very clearly that that letter satisfied the requirement of that particular request in the, in the letter. And now what he's doing is he's seeking to discredit him, his own testimony. I, I think that, that you've already stated that, and I said that I think what he's trying to do is clarify the point, which is appropriate on redirect. And you have an opportunity on recross, and they make people groan, 
But you have an opportunity to recall this, as you know. Go ahead, Mr. Richards. So again, Mr. Locke, looking at the letter from Friedman Schulman that was identified as Appellant 1, does anywhere in that letter state that the property owners intend to, going forward into the future, remain in compliance with the borough code? Would you agree with me, sir, it actually just states that they're currently in compliance and never was a violation? Would you agree with that determination that they were never in a violation? Now, during the cross-examination, you were asked questions regarding a meeting that occurred on December 7, 2017. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you recall who was at that meeting? Mr. and Mrs. Downs, Sean Kilkenny, and Anthony Williams were coming from the Golf Club. I was at that meeting. And I assume you were also present at that meeting? Yes, sir, I was present. Okay. And when you were at that meeting, what, if anything, did you discuss with the Downs? We discussed the complaints that were filed. We showed them photos of what we had looked at, and Sean Kilkenny explained the process and what the letter was saying. Okay. You stated that you discussed the complaints that were filed. Are you referring to the complaints that were previously identified as B-2 through B-9? Yes. And you also mentioned that you had reviewed photographs with them. Are those the photographs that were attached to B-2 through B-9? Yes. Okay. And as a part of those photographs, I believe during cross-examination, there was some questioning regarding some photographs involving Grace Presbyterian Church. Do you recall that? Yes. And if I could take a moment to find those photographs. This is under B-6. Do you recall during that December 7, 2017 meeting, discussing the photographs showing Grace Lutheran Church, as well as, I guess, the truck that was owned by the Downs is in front of the church? We showed all the photos. Do you remember discussing these particular photos with the Downs? Yes. During your discussions with the Downs, did you ever chance to ask the Downs why they had the lawnmower equipment that you believed to be more commercial in nature rather than residential in nature? I've had those discussions with David. And when you say David, do you mean Mr. Downs? Yes, I'm sorry. And what did he say in response to those questions? I don't remember exactly what he said. He had a friend, I believe, that was ill that he was helping out somewhere else. Okay. Same discussion. It's not exactly on the lawnmower, but with the trailer. The volunteer was in what he does. Okay. Did he mention to you at all about him cutting other individuals' grasses other than his own or other than the church? I don't recall. Now, you were asked some questions about photographs that, again, were attached to the documents that were previously identified. And I believe you identified that one of the photographs show the, you called it the Rodman property. Do you recall that? Yes. Now, I'd like to show you I'd like to show you the photographs that were attached to B7. And if you could take a moment and specifically take a look at the photographs that are on pages 3, 4, and 5. Thank you. 
Now, you said you were familiar with the 301 running need property? Is that correct? Do those photographs on 3, 4, and 5 show the running need property? And do they show somebody cutting grass on a property other than 301 running need property? But again, that is that. Well, let me ask you this: Is that the Rodman property? Yes. Oh, that is okay. So, then I'd like to show you the photographs that were attached to B eight, specifically pages six. Seven, eight, and nine. If you could take a moment to look at those photographs, please. I believe it's six through nine. Are they the last three? I believe it's the last three or four. And it's the last four. Serge, I just want you to focus your attention on the photographs. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do those pictures show the 301 running meat property? This one doesn't. The first one doesn't. The second one doesn't. I'm not <laughs> Okay, so let's actually focus on the last photograph for a second. You had just testified about a large lawnmower being used. Um, is in the last photograph of B8, is that the lawnmower that you're referring to? Yes, it is. Okay. And that's the lawnmower that you believe is more commercial in nature than residential in nature. And why do you believe that again? Because I it's not something you normally see on a residential lawn. And how, yeah, and how large are lots typically in the Jenkintown, in the B1 district? Do you recall? Are they acre lots? Are they less than an acre lots? Yes, 10,000 square feet, but I'm not positive. Okay. Would you agree with me then that a lawnmower that size isn't typical for a <coughs> 10,000 square feet? Now, I believe you were testified earlier that the first photograph, or say the, the fourth one from the end, does not show the 301 Runny Mead property. Is that correct? Uh, is that also show the Rodman property? No. So that's an entirely different property other than the Rodman property and the Grace Lutheran Church. That you were presented suggesting that they were that there were activities, landscaping activities going on at other properties. Now you were asked a question that whether you received any further complaints after October 24th or thereabouts of 2017. Do you recall that? Yes, have you ever mowed your own grass? Yes, I have mowed my own grass. Do you typically mow your grass in December? No, I don't. Do you typically mow your grass in January? No. Do you typically mow your grass in February? No. Would you say whether we've had a particularly good or bad winter this year? Now you were asked questions about whether or not, or how you determined that there was equipment being loaded on and off the 301 running meat property. Do you recall that? Yes, I
like to direct your attention to what was previously marked as B5 and the photographs attached there too. On page two of B5, that shows a photograph of an individual moving another lawnmower. Is that the same size lawnmower that we saw in the earlier photograph? Mm -hmm. And again, would you consider that a residential or commercial in nature lawnmower? Okay. And do you believe that's Mr. Downs pushing that lawnmower? Okay. And do you know where he's pushing that lawnmower to? Yours is always ended up his driveway. His own driveway. Okay, so if you could flip to the next photograph, do you know, if you could, is this, would you agree with me this is a photograph showing a truck with ramps leading up to the back of the truck? Do you know whether or not, do you believe that to be the Downs' truck or somebody else's truck? I believe that to be the Downs' truck. And do you know whether that, that truck is located on the Downs' property or located somebody else's property? In this picture? In that picture. I can 100% say. Okay. And then I would say, I would ask for the, the third picture, could you I'd say for 100% whether that's located in his driveway or in somebody else's driveway? Thank you. Then I'm going to show you a picture under B6, which is the second page. Uh, again, do you know, I believe you had testified earlier, but to confirm, is that the Downs' driveway? I believe it is. Uh, and do you know whose truck that is? It's the Downs' truck. I don't know his ownership. If you were to compare the trucks from B5 to B6, are they the same or different? You don't think that there's a color difference between a white truck and a, what appears to be a blue truck? Is he, is he now seeking to cross-examine and give this credit? That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So with the truck that's located in the driveway that Downs is under B6, I think you had testified earlier that shows a lawnmower in the back of the vehicle, correct? And is there any apparatus on the left-hand side of the truck? Yes, there's wooden racks with hooks on it. Now, were you provided any photographs showing that these equipment were either loaded or stored in a location other than 301 Running Meat? No, I was not. When you met with the Downs, did they tell you that this equipment was stored or located at a property other than 301 Running Meat? Now, you were asked a question during cross-examination regarding <coughs> animosity between what were essentially, as I understand, neighbors between the Downses and the Glasses. Do you recall that? I was asked that question. And you were also asked whether or not you took into consideration that animosity as a part of the <coughs> notice violation process. Do you recall that as well? Mm -hmm. And just to just ask again, did you take that into consideration? Yeah, I, as I stated before, we took, I took everything into consideration. As a part of that animosity, um, I believe Mr. Yanov had brought up questions with regard to <coughs> civil actions brought by the Downses against the Glasses. Do you recall that? Objection. I never, I never said that. It, Mr. Yell, if he doesn't recall it, he'll recall it. And you can recall it. To cut to the chase, I believe it was about criminal, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. You said so. I, I'm sorry. It's 945, let's cut to the chase. Do you recall being asked questions about criminal charges being brought by the Downses against the Glasses? Uh, are you aware of any, any incidences that would have involved the the reverse, meaning the Downs pursuing something against the glasses in a zoning context. Yes, I do. Okay, and what is that? It was complaints about them running a business at 303 Okay. 
And when you got those complaints from the Downses, what did you do? We reviewed the letter, or the letter, the complaints, the photographs, and the videos. That were provided by? The Downses. With regard to? The glasses. Okay. And based off of your review of the photographs, letters, <coughs> and videos, and other information provided by the Downses, what did you do with regard to the glasses property and the alleged business operating out of that location? Well, many of the pictures we responded that they did not rise to the level of the business being operated. Um, we cited him when he brought equipment back to the house from the job site. And uh, I cited him in the court. The judge upheld the ticket and they were fined for $500. So the record is clear. When you say you cited him, who is him? Joe Glass. So you had cited Joe Glass for operating a business out of his property based off of equipment being stored on his property? Yes. Equipment being brought back to his property. Okay. And as a result of that citation, it went before the magisterial district judge. Is that correct? That is correct. And what did the magisterial district judge do with that citation? Well, she, she set it aside for, I believe, 90 days to monitor the situation. Uh, we went back before her, and she upheld the citation, and it was for $500. So in upholding the citation, did that mean that the judge was essentially finding that they were in violation of the <coughs> B-1 operating a business? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that the new standard that you referred to in your prior memo that was marked as B-11? That was what I was referring to. So based off of your understanding of what the magisterial district judge directed you to do, was it your understanding that if certain equipment was stored and or located on a person's property, that that was operating a business? That's what I understand. Uh, and finally, you were asked questions with regard to the code. Uh, I believe Mr. Yanov had asked you with regard to what he referred to as criteria under section 181-10, which is sitting here in front of you. Do you <coughs> Yes, I do. <clears throat> Would you agree with me that those criteria are requirements that are in addition to being a no impact based business, correct? That's correct. So meaning you have to both satisfy the no impact and then satisfy the criteria on top of that? Yeah. <clears throat> the same thing. I, I believe to be a no impact, you has to have to satisfy these criteria as well as the definition of a no-impact. And finally, you were asked questions with regard to hypotheticals about cutting neighbors' lawns um, uh, for no remuneration or uh, gratis. Do you recall that? Yes. When you make a zoning determination, strike that. What factors would you consider in that hypothetical as to whether or not it was or was not operating a business? And when you, okay, no other questions. Mr. Yanoff? Yes, thank you. What do you mean by it was making an impact? I would refer to the definition of a no impact. So it was making noise? Um, that was one of the things that was the matter. There's, there's eight criteria here on what it could be. Um, but if somebody, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, I would use the definition of these eight criteria. <laughs> but if somebody were doing volunteer work and cutting somebody's lawn, Regardless of whether it satisfied those criteria, you would consider that to be a commercial landscaping business? If I received eight complaints on different dates of somebody cutting different lawns, I would take that into consideration. If you're saying if I would narrowly look at one thing, is if they did it for one person one time, I would agree that that wouldn't be a business. I suppose they did it for somebody on an ongoing basis who was infirm and couldn't cut their own lawn. I think that it would depend on the impact that they were causing. We'll, we'll address that issue at another time. Did you receive any, any, do you have any information at all about the, about the equipment being stored on this, on the Runnymede Avenue property? No. No. So this other issue, 
This other complaint against Mr. and Mrs. Glass involved the storage of construction equipment on their property, right? Storage of construction of glass. The storage of construction equipment on their property. Citation was running for Britain bringing things back in and pick up truck. And storing it on their property. Never left the pickup truck. Stored on their in the pickup truck on their property. Yeah. That's not the case here, right? Not the same thing here, right? No, there's two different cases here. Right, thank you. And next door to each other. Right. Two. two different cases, right. All right. Um, the complaint against the glasses was actually also brought by a number of other neighbors, not just Mr. and Mrs. Downs. Is that correct? There was complaints in the first couple of weeks from other neighbors. Other neighbors, okay. <coughs> the other property that you that you talked about, not the Rodman property and not the Rodman property that you identified in the pictures in, in response to Mr. Hitchens' questions. Do you know who owns that property and who lives there? No, I do not. You don't. Okay. And, and Mr. D in, in your meeting of December 7th, Mr. Downs told you that they did volunteer work and helped a friend out and helped a neighbor out, right? I'm not sure if that's the point where he told me about the friend that was ill. But he did tell you. He did tell me. Right. Okay. The notice, the violation notice, which is marked as ZHB1, on the second page. Can you look at that? Can you look at You testified in response to redirect examination from Mr. Hitchens that you really wouldn't understand why somebody would take an appeal to the zoning hearing board if they were in compliance. You, that's what you said, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I said. Okay. This letter says, in the event that no appeal is taken to the zoning hearing board, this notice will be conclusive of the violation. So if the Downs didn't take an appeal, it would be conclusive that they violated the they violated the borough code, right? That is correct. That's how the NPC states it. Okay. So isn't it a belts and suspenders approach to tell you, write a letter saying we're not in violation of the code, but we're going to take an appeal because if I don't, it's conclusive that I am in violation. <laughs> the letter said if they put in writing that they will comply, that that was acceptable to the borough. But isn't it the same thing that's, 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 that's saying that I'm not in violation? Mr. and Mrs. Downs are not in violation, but then we're going to file an appeal just to make sure we don't run afoul of this notice requirement. I don't know why they would do that, but certainly they could do that. They could do that, right? Yeah, thank you. Are there further questions? Okay, um, I'm going to ask the board off the record. <clears throat> Just gonna take a brief recess. I'd like to talk to the attorneys out in the hallway. There we go. We're back in session. Thank you. So, uh, for the board's edification and for the record, uh, we were just discussing um, the second hearing date. As uh, the fact of the matter is, there is no way that we're going to finish the hearing tonight. There are a number of other witnesses. Two more witnesses for the borough, and potentially other witnesses for the applicant as well. So, and, and then there would be public comment as well. Uh, so, there's no way that we can finish this evening. But there's one witness that uh, needs to go tonight. So that witness is going to go tonight. And then, for the record, we're going to come back on June seventh at seven o'clock, seven p.m. here at. Uh, Borough Hall, <clears throat> and we've confirmed that all the attorneys can attend, the board can attend, and the witnesses, other than the one that's going to go tonight, can all attend. Um, the notice will not be 
Further notice will not be given. Notice was provided for uh, this hearing, and therefore, and we're announcing the second date at this hearing, therefore, notice does not have to go out for that second hearing. Mr. Hitchens, you agree with that? Yeah, that's correct. Mr. Yanoff, you yes, agree with that? I do. Very well. So, Mr. Hitchens, if you can call your second witness, please. Uh, will do. Um, if I could call Frank Riley. Mr. Riley, if you could come forward. Oh, sorry. You could. This doesn't need to be on the record, just sit in the chair. <laughs> Just stay and raise your right hand, sir. He's trying to swear to testimony about the gift of truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. Can I give your full name? Uh, Francis Riley, F R A N C I S. Vincent Riley, R E I L E Y. Mr. Riley, uh, first, um, I believe the Zoning Hearing Board still sort of re re referenced this, but uh, are you going to be available on June 7th? I am not. Why will you not be available on June 7th? I will be overseas. Uh, when you say overseas, where do you mean? Kabul, Afghanistan. Okay. And is that a part of personal vacation, business? I call it home anymore. <laughs> but I, that's where I've been doing business for the last 13 years, Iraq and Afghanistan. Is the best. Okay. I just want to make sure, Mr. Solicitor, the record reflects as to why this witness isn't going to be here. <coughs> um, Mr. Riley, um, do you own property within the municipality? I do. Uh, and where is that property located? 303 Running Mead Avenue. And where is that property in relation to 301 Running Mead Avenue? You look at next door. Uh, and how long have you owned that property? 1981. <coughs> um, do you currently live at that property? Um, who lives at that property? Uh, the classes, um, the children, and the grandparents. Two, two of the grandparents. Um, so would it be fair to say you rent that property out to the Glass family? I do. Um, <coughs> prior to renting out the property to the Glass family, did you live there? Yes. When you lived there, did, did the Downs live next door at 301 Running Me? For the majority of the time. And uh, without going into great detail, uh, how would you characterize your relationship with the Downses at the time you lived there? Objection, relevance. Uh, I'll make a proffer that uh, there was a identification of a blower in the photographs that I believe the witness will testify that he gave to the Downses after he left, which I think goes to the relationship they had at the time, which I'm just trying to lay the foundation to get to that point. What difference is that? I don't. I don't. Well, I think the blower's relevant, so let's cut to the chase. <laughs> so, let me ask this question then. Um, prior to your vacating the property, did you provide anything to the Downses? Yes, uh, at the time Ryan was cutting my glass at, you know, uh, as a service, and uh, because we were moving to a rental property that was already getting services, if you will, um, I just offered it to him. It was commercial grade, um, but it was um, the one I believe that you saw at 301 on Friday. previously marked as B3, the seventh to last picture. I'm going to show the witness. Uh, Mr. Riley, what is that a picture of? Uh, the blower, uh, specifically, that I was speaking of. Uh, another one. <coughs> now, why did you provide that blower to the downs as objection relevance? What possible reason? relationship does that have to this particular violation? You wanted to know what, what the blower was, you found out what the blower was, if that's true. The, the, the issue about why he gave it to him has nothing to do with this hearing. When, when did you give him the blower? Thanks. I'm going to have to say 2000 and Mr. Hitchens, can you ask your next question? I'm going to sustain the objection. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hmm. 
Mr. Riley, uh, you stated that, that uh, at the time when you were living there, they were providing services at your property. Is that correct? That's correct. Who were providing services for you? Originally, it was Nicholas, um, and then from there, uh, Ryan, then took over Nicholas's business. Objection. I was paying. Objection. <laughs> The offer of proof here is we've identified various photographs showing individuals in there. Mr. Locke has previously testified in those photographs are pictures of, I believe, Nicholas, I've asked Mr. Riley to identify that those are in fact the children. I believe I have the right to ask this witness as to whether or not those individuals were performing law knowing services, which would clearly be part of the information that Mr. Locke would have considered as a part of the as a part of his determination. My objection what? is that the, that does not translate into a business, which is how it's been characterized. Mr. I, Mr. 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 Riley, when when you were just talking about Nicholas and Ryan, when were they doing this? From probably 2005 and right up to the last time I'd actually asked them to uh, do work at the house, which was approximately 2000. 14 or 15, the summer of. Well, sustained, Mr. Really. Hitchens, you can, you can, objections sustained, Mr. Manoff. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens, you can ask uh, questions about, I'm sure, whether he knows Nick or Ryan and can identify them. That would be relevant because sure. the photographs are from fairly recent. I'm going to hand you, unfortunately now, several documents that have been identified with various photographs. I'd like you to take, this is documents B, Three through B9. Mr. Riley, I'd like you to take a moment and look through those photographs, and when you identify a picture of Nicholas or Ryan, please let me know. Objection. The violation notice is against Mr. and Mrs. Downs that they are running a commercial landscaping business. Whether their kids did it in 2005 to 2014 has absolutely no relevance. Understood, and I sustain that objection. He's now looking, asking to look at the photographs from more recently, and it is relevant. Please answer the question, sir. Let me start you there, stop you there. You're referring to what has been marked as B7, is that correct? Okay, and I believe you're identifying what is on page four of B7 as a photograph of Ryan, is that correct? And who is Ryan? So again, for the record, you've identified B3, is that correct? And 
if you could count the number of pages from the end that that photograph appears. From the end. Well, when I realized. Oh, from the beginning. Well, when you did it in the first one. I mean, it says on one. By sure, it looks like the third one. It's a bad picture. And the same picture as the last one on the fourth page. Dave on the fifth. David. Just for the record, the, the, the question was about Ryan, or it was not David. Go ahead. Ask your next question. Um, so, as the owner of the property, um, did you ever get notification uh, regarding complaints or issues with regard to the Downses in 2017 with regard to operating a business at 301 Running Meet? Tenants uh, complaining about objection it. hearsay. The witness has not testified as to what the tenant said to him. Well, he, you asked the question about whether or not it, he received a complaint, and he said yes. My witnesses, my tenants, and he's about to say that. If I could be permitted to ask my follow-up question. Based off of your discussions with your tenants, what was your understanding of the complaints? Objection. Hearsay. It's based upon what his tenants told him. <coughs> Does the videos count? No. I'm sorry. It is not hearsay if I'm not asking the witness to state what was told to him. I'm merely asking his opinion, his understanding, his mental impressions from what conversations he had with those outside. It is standard and routine to ask those sorts of questions. Uh, Mr. Yanoff, I've heard you ask the same, do the same thing. I'm going to allow it. Go ahead. Um, do you want to ask? Sure. You know. Based off of your conversations with your tenants, what was your understanding of the concerns or complaints? You know, basically, it was a complaint. How can they be blaming us for... Objection. And, and allow me to direct the witness. Without stating... Wait, 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 wait. I, don't, I haven't heard that you're allowed to direct hold the on, witness. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Why don't you get to the point of uh, the impact, if any, on uh, Mr. Riley as the landlord based on what he was told? All right. In response to that question, sir, could you please answer that? What was your understanding of the impact on your property? Based off of what your, your conversations were? Essentially concern for quality, uh, quiet enjoyment of the property, which is a, a landlord's responsibility to a tenant. Okay? That essentially um, the, the use of the equipment, you know, two, three days a week, um, uh, on and off the, uh, the, the uh, vehicles, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, there were a lot of other things going on, but as far as that was concerned, mainly the uh, excessive use of, uh, you know, a lawnmower that is large. And yes, it's <coughs> used commercially, uh, if you will. I physically was, you know, given the videos, some of the ones that... that Mr. Hitchens, ask your next question. You can't go into the videos. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand the basis as to what the objection was to if that. If you need to talk about videos that I think were sitting on that table and haven't been put into evidence, and I have allowed stills to come in, but I don't think it's appropriate to talk about him viewing that video when we haven't seen the video. And with that then, it, unfortunately, you're putting me in a position where I have to have the videos played while he is still here, if that's what you're suggesting, that he can only testify as to what his understanding was based off of you. The question was, what was the impact? In his view, what is the impact? I think he can get to that without going into what's on the videos. What was the impact on the property? The lack of quiet enjoyment. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Mr. Riley, based off of your communications with <coughs> your tenant, um, did you take any further action? Objection, relevance. 
You can slap your... your uh, stop. Hold on. It's 10.30 at night. That doesn't mean we need to get crazy. Okay? Ask the question again. Based off of your communications with your tenant, did you take any further action? Objection. Overruled. Okay. Uh, I contacted my lawyer and considered, you know, actions myself. Uh, I've also, I also asked the glasses to give me their attorney's uh, information because, quite frankly, uh, it caused a significant income problem for them. Objection. And then a significant income for me. Income problem for the, for the glasses doesn't relate to the impact on this property. Okay, and you can point that in cross. That's his testimony. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, you know, and, you know, too many violations back and forth of everything, you know, back and forth. It was just, uh, I don't need that over there. I have bottom line. I don't need it. My family doesn't need it where they live in there. Um, at any point, sir, after this, should that be stricken that where he lives now has absolutely nothing to do with this violation? And the board can take into consideration whether they it's going to waive or not. Not strike. Go ahead. Ask the next question. At any point after speaking with your your attorneys, the glasses attorneys, and the glasses themselves, did you communicate at all with the township? Uh, a number of times uh, with George. Um, I believe once I think with Albert, but I'm not sure whether it had to do with this. Um, but yes, mostly with George, my concerns, um, you know, uh, I needed this to go away. We needed this to go away. We all need this to go away. And did you ever put those concerns in writing form to the municipality? <coughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as B14. <coughs> Do you recognize what I've marked as B14? I do. And what is B14? The letter that I sent to the borough council to be read at the borough council. Um, <coughs> uh, I believe it was inadvertently read at this uh, forum rather than the borough council forum, so I believe it's in the borough or the zoning board records. It is and a concerned citizen's statement, <coughs> rather than a complaint. Um, and my concern about all the things that have occurred to include the issue over the landscaping being done, and as, as the hypocritical concept that they're harassing my tenants about uh, running a business specifically where I point out that there was at that time over 52,000 hours of video and they could only come up with five pictures could possibly be a violation, possibly a violation. Objection. And what this has nothing to do with this violation. This letter has nothing to do with this violation. It contains scurrilous material, it contains defamatory material, and it contains issues that have nothing to do with this proceeding, which is only about a, the running of a commercial landscape business at a running meeting. And to allow this letter to be testified to is ridiculous. And it goes way beyond the pale. I can't read all this right now. Can you please tell me how this is relevant? Because I'm looking at bank records from 2010. That I can't read, and it doesn't seem relevant to go back that far. It's being offered for the purpose of showing that in addition to the glasses, the municipality received other complaints and other concerns with regard to the property. Certainly this council, this board, is able to in its own judgment, define, determine whether it's useful or not useful, credible, not credible. That's a credibility or usefulness determination by this board. But I certainly think the borough and the municipality has a right to introduce all the complaints that it received with regard to the 301 running the Avenue. Mr. Yano certainly has a right to cross-examine and, and state that this is irrelevant and that it doesn't show it, but we certainly have a right to show that we received multiple complaints with regard to 301 running the Avenue. Here's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to take, um, and, and this hasn't been moved into evidence, but, but it's been marked. 
For now, though, I'm going to say that these bank records from 2010 are not relevant. I'm going to take those off. They are not, I do not see how they could possibly be relevant from eight years ago. So I'm going to take those off. Um, I would ask the board not to look at those pages. And the letter will be marked, the first two pages will be marked B14. And the board will give it its weight. That it the letter is also a document which, if you're going to take it for whatever reason, it's a document which speaks for itself. And to allow him to testify from it, I understand it. He, he has a right to explain the letter he wrote. <laughs> Only if it's relevant to this He does. So when he asks a question and it's not relevant, I will hear your objection. I'm sure I will. Go the ahead. problem is we have a stream of consciousness testimony. I, I would ask, just simply because it's 1030, just ask questions of your, your witness and let's try to move it along. We've got to do that. We're not going to end it. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Mr. Riley, other than the telephone calls that you made and that letter that you sent, did you make other any other written complaints to the municipality with regard to 301 running meet Avenue yeah. after what was the date of that letter? October 7th, 16th, last year. Okay. Did you make any other written statements <laughs> to the municipality? Uh, request for information in reference to the property, uh, the 103, uh, the 301 running meet in terms of a tree limb, I don't know if that's relevant. Um, I may have, an, uh, other than, I'm busy over there. I don't get tons of stuff. Uh, hold on, hold on, come on, come on, come on. I want the audience, everyone in the gallery to remain quiet throughout the entire time. We need to get through this. This is a witness that the borough has called. We're going to listen to his testimony, Mr. Hitchens. Keep asking questions, please. Uh, my final question I would like to direct to the board before I ask it as a witness, only because I anticipate an objection. Mr. Riley has testified already that he's not going to be here on June 7th, 2018. Um, and you heard the reasons why. Uh, because he won't be here on June 7th, 2018, that means Mr. Riley would be unable to speak during the public comment section. I would therefore like to ask Mr. Riley what statements, if any, he would give during the public comment section, which should not be a part of his formal testimony, but certainly would have been what he would have been permitted to provide during the public comment section. Fine. Go ahead. So, Mr. Am I going to be permitted to cross-examine on these <coughs> public comments? Because that's not a part of his testimony, I would recommend that, it, that I would object to it. Mr. Yanoff, we're taking a break from, from his testimony. This is going to be considered public comment, and, the, and it, as if it, it would come at the very end. During, yeah. during the hearing. If it would be easier to the board, I would be happy for allowing him to do cross-examination. After cross-examination is completed, then Mr. Riley could make his public comment. And we could if you wrote a letter, Mr. Yanoff, and submitted that during public comment, typically you would ask the person come in and not read a letter. Would that be more appropriate? I have to say what he's going to say. Okay. Go ahead, sir. <coughs> this is public, for the record, this is public comment, mm -hmm. not for cross-examination. Go ahead. I don't know how we got here. And I'm talking to everybody. I hope that's okay that way. Because again, it's public. You know, how many people in this room don't know me? I've been your mailman, okay? I was part of the cruise with the JYA. I ran the, the board of uh, recreation for years, okay? This wasn't the Jenkintown I moved into. I moved out of Jenkintown for other reasons. This is the, this has been ridiculous, mm -hmm. and that's what this letter is about: is the ridiculousness of this. Pe people are being held. Now I'm talking about the glasses, and that's what this letter speaks to. As if they never, nobody could care about what their true story was. They just wanted to say, okay, he, he was arrested once or twice. But let's talk about the reality. What was it for? That's up to them. They they offered for you to come. Stop the internet. Sir, okay. Public comment means he's talking. No one else is responding. Get to know the glasses. Okay. Or should I say, get to know your neighbor? I, I really don't have much of a. Earlier, it asked what kind of relationship that I have with Dave and Peggy. I think it was good. Right up to the days I left. Right now, I'm just not sure it's the same day Peggy, but I would hope you'd be 
get back there. That's it. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to also address, appreciate your comments, sir. I want to address B14. I did not have a chance to read this, and now I'm reading it. I think that it is much more appropriate to keep to as public comment versus a record in this matter. I have no objection to moving on public comment rather than as a record for the testimony portion. We are going to have cross-examination. I'm just dealing with the fact that before we move to cross-examination, I don't think that this B14 is relevant at all. I'm not going to allow that in as an exhibit. Earlier, just to be clear, I had taken off the bank records. I am now saying that B14 in its entirety is not relevant, and I would ask the board to pass that over to me. And Mr. Yanoff, you can cross-examine. Thank you, sir. You have a written lease with the Blasses? I do. And when did that lease start? Everything. I'm going to say September of 16. September of 2016? Yeah. Okay. And what is the lease term? It's at this point month to month. Month to month. Have they given you any indication that they're moving? Objection, relevance. What's the relevance, Mr. Yanoff? He's telling us that there's an adverse impact on his property. I want to find out whether there's an adverse impact on his rental relationship with the Blasses. That goes to whether or not there's an adverse impact on his property. Fair enough. Go ahead. So, could you repeat? Have they given you any indication that they're moving? No. Do you anticipate that they will be moving? No. What is the monthly rental? Objection, relevance. Same issue. Amount paid or amount owed? It goes to impact. Amount paid or amount owed? Well, let's talk about what the monthly rental is in accordance with your month to month lease. Two thousand. A month. Plus utilities? That's theirs. They pay utilities, right? Okay. And how much do they owe you in back rent? I haven't calculated, but I'd say they've only paid five thousand over the last, since this crap started. Excuse me. They paid you five thousand dollars since when? January of last year. A year and a half? Over a year and a half they paid you five thousand dollars on a two thousand dollar a month rental? Is that yes? That's correct. What action have you taken to enforce the lease? Objection. I will sustain the objection. If he has an adverse impact, I'm entitled to know that. I think it's going too far now. Next question. You're aware that the glasses were fined by the borough for storing the construction equipment on their site, isn't that? You're aware of that, aren't you? Objection outside the scope of direct. Hardly. It has to do with, he's talking about quiet enjoyment. I want to know what quiet enjoyment is for this gentleman. It's with regard to his own property. Mr. Yanoff, I'll ask you a question. The question is, are you aware that the glasses were cited and fined by the borough for the storage of construction equipment on the site? As far as I know, that in the first month only that I know of. I'm not sure if there's been a... Is that a yes? I guess it's a yes. Do you believe that the storage of construction equipment would somehow impact the quiet enjoyment of other neighbors in the B1 residential neighborhood? Not once. So the storage of construction equipment and running a construction operation from his location would somehow, excuse me, would somehow not violate the quiet enjoyment of Mr. and Mrs. Downs or any of the other neighbors in the vicinity? Objection. Relevance. We're not here about the quiet enjoyment of the Downs' property. Well, Mr. Hickman, but I think what it's going to, you put him on as a witness that was discussing the concept of quiet enjoyment. What Mr. Yanoff is now doing is probing what that concept means to him, and I do think that's very relevant considering how the ordinance reads. And my answer, if they were to do it continually, I've yet to see proof that outside of that first time that they were cited for it and held accountable for it, okay, and I believe it was a sign, okay, no, I would not. One time. So the operation of a commercial construction business with a sign on a residential property somehow 
does not violate the quiet enjoyment of other neighbors in the property, including Mr. and Mrs. Downs. Objection, I, objection again. I know you're going to sustain, you're going to overrule the objection, but I have to object. It's completely out of bounds and completely irrelevant. I think I'm going to sustain your objection because he answered the question already. <laughs> Next question, Mr. When was the last time you actually physically visited the property? Outside of today. Outside of today. Uh, April of last year. April 2016. 17. 17. Did you, did you personally, outside of videos and letters and pictures, observe a commercial landscape business at the property owned by the Downses? No. No, no further questions. No reason. All right. Just for the record, we're going to come. Um, does the board have any questions? I apologize. I should have asked this. Does the board have any questions? Of this witness. <laughs> okay. So we're going to come back on June 7, 2018 at 7 o'clock. Mr. Martin, may I ask one question? Well, actually, it's on the record.